good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It's time for some TFT. Sit up straight, let's go. Monkey Bubble Banana Split is live, and now we are going to our final couple lobbies to end off this tournament. But to introduce ourselves, I'm Lemon Kiwi. Most importantly, a friendly face, it's Cardax. How are you today? Hi, my name is Last Cardax. You can just call me Cardax. I'm doing great. Woke up on the right side of the bed, excited to see these players face off today. Um, so we got some amazing, talented players here. I'm extremely hyped to watch these guys uh, battle it out today. Yeah, let's talk about quickly about the format of how of what these players are competing in today. It's a little bit different than what I've ever casted before. Um, a checkmate 24, where you have to get up to 24 points. The distribution of each game is 10 points for first place, 8 points, 7 points, 6 points for second, third, and fourth, and then 4, 3, 2, 1 points down at the bottom side. And then for each game, you can accumulate points to 24. But once you hit that checkmate, that 24 point total, you must get a first place or you must get up to 40 points total in order to win our grand prize and uh we had uh, some nice prizes on the line absolutely yeah um first place like cops like a nice 500 so that's like honestly a lot of money yesterday um we were having a conversation about like how like this is really good for us and it's nice to have like um like a competitive scene like blow up for EUS so I'm really glad that you know these players get to face off and show their skills here today mm -hmm. so uh, 500 bucks for first and 300 for second 250 for third and then literally everyone uh, even the bottom four mm -hmm. get a part of this prize pool which is awesome you get to just show up go eighth and walk away with money I mean I wish I could get paid to go eighth unfortunately I do not <laughs> but <sighs> we can get into uh, who we're featuring today a lot of amazing talent both from you know Latin America and those who competed in the EMEA closed qualifier and lots of people that you know right Cardax? Yeah, I, I know most of these players here. I mean, these are like EU's finest. Let's be real here. Um, we got Salvi. Uh, everyone knows who Salvi is. Um, you know, he was competing uh, in the qualifiers. Unfortunately, didn't make it. Um, but he is a definitely a contender to be uh, um, to be scared of. Honestly, uh, great player, consistently on the ladder, always at the top of the ladder. Um, rank four currently on the EUS ladder. So he's he's definitely a contender here. We got Resdretto, GLG Jaro, the Louch, Seek, Simply, and Scipius and Zwait. Um, so I'm really excited to see these players face off here today. I know I'm gonna like NA pronounce <laughs> pronounce like all of these names. I'm already ready. Um, yeah, two big names, and one of them you mentioned already, Salvi, who made it to that. E EMEA close qualifier didn't make it to Worlds, so unfortunate there, but who did make it to Worlds, Skip, who got third in the close qualifier and then got second to represent EU in at Worlds, so that's super awesome. Are you thinking Skip is the strongest player in this lobby potentially, or is it really going to be close? Honestly, um, I think it's going to be close. Skip definitely is talented as a player. Uh, I've watched a lot of his games. Um, apparently, he's the self-proclaimed best um, fiddlesticks player in the US. I don't know. He likes to call himself that. <laughs> he says that he positions fiddlesticks better than everyone else in the world. So I'm down to see a little bit of fiddlesticks positioning here by Skip. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely I'm definitely rooting for, for, for my boys. Um, we'll... we'll um, uh, I, I mean, Resdretto is someone that I know personally. Um, he's been copying my playstyle, and he's definitely here to show it off. <laughs> so I'm really excited to see Resdretto play, um, and hopefully, you know, he brings he brings a good show to the table. I love the teacher grasshopper. Uh thing going on but we get to go into our first game today and you know this could be a really quick day we could have somebody just back to back first place first place first place and then you know we could be done in four lobbies or we could be done in six or eight that's what i kind of really like about this checkmate format is you can get to 24 points but you need a first to truly lock that in and there are some players that play for the top four like for mm -hmm. example me i don't get a lot of first places but i do like to have that consistent top four but you need to get a first to really achieve uh, to be successful in this tournament, unless you want to grind all your all the way to the 40 points, which seems like a lot of extra hassle than just getting a first. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of these players here um, have a have a consistent top four like play style. Um, but we have um, Resdretto specifically loves to play for first or eighth. 
So we'll be seeing <laughs> if he's going to be going eighth on the first lobby or a potential first. Um, a lot of these players here um, adapt really quickly um, in the mid game, especially. So I'm going to love to see how they transition their boards in the mid game, especially in stage four. I've just um, been hearing so much about how important your mid game is and how you play that just determines your success in the game. Because, you know, early it's it's okay to lose streak uh, yeah. as long as, you know, you sacrifice an important resource of that HP. But as long as you keep up that streak, then you can make up a little bit of economy. So I'm wondering what kind of luck can bless our players just in this early game. Sometimes you have the right three cost that arrives in your neutral round and that mm -hmm. can just dictate your direction. You just run with the wind, especially if it's something you're comfortable with. Like you brought totally. up Resdredo, who yeah. uh, looking at a lot of the comps he was playing and it was like all abominations. Yeah, he, he, he definitely loves to run the Abom into the Heimer in the late game. And if he doesn't hit the Heimer, he'll just play a Vel'Koz. The so random game here, um, opening carousel. Um, we got all the items on the board. We see Resretto going for the tier. We know he wants to play Heimerdinger. Definitely on his mind. Salvi does love to play Draven or Knock Flex. So I'm excited to see what ends up happening on both these boards. I've just always stayed away from tier starts because I feel like just a damage item is is nice to go for uh, as your first item and just something to help you win streak early. And, you know, there's there's Hodge as a damage item, but you're mostly looking at a Shoujin's is like kind of the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to having a tier start. And I'm not sure how much a, a Shoujin's is really popping off unless you're maybe going a renewer route or something, but totally. you seem to yeah. be OK with tier starts. Yeah, totally. Um, the reason why I really like tier start is because when you're playing Heimerdinger, you really need to greed your best in slot. Um, because if you don't have like Archangel into Shoujin, usually like your Heimerdinger does peanuts, uh, especially mm -hmm. after the the nerf recently to Heimer. So you're you're trying your best to like get the BIS as soon as possible, play Draconics and get your economy on the go and like get that Heimerdinger ASAP. Um, so we see Salvi here get a triple vein on the opener. Has a belt, cloak, and recurve. Might slam rune ends here, honestly. Um, I think he's thinking about it. I feel like a Vayne would be a great carrier for that. It would be nice to have that second ranger, but uh, we'll see uh, what they decide to go for. There's no real synergies that you're looking for besides, at least, if you're not going to have any synergies, at least a Vayne 2 is better than nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Has the double Tristana drop? Oh my god. Sells it, buys the pike, buys the cannon, gets the Callista, gets the Vayne 2. Definitely Vayne 2 here is amazing. I've noticed that Vayne 2 recently um, is definitely coming back into, into the meta. I feel like Vayne is one of those units that's like sleeper OP, where she just carries like your early mid game really hard and just takes you fast 8. You just go fast level 8 with that unit. I remember, I don't even remember, it's like you wake up from a coma and you're like, oh, Vayne reroll, Vayne three star with the, <laughs> the jewel gauntlet. Like, remember when they yeah. still had the uh, the corrupted items there that that was. <laughs> yeah, back <laughs> in set five, items, Vayne was, cool. was definitely a menace. We would see her like quite a bit. So here Salvi's facing against Skip. Skip's board is, um, I think it's Sentinels, which are really OP in the early game. But will they be a match for this Vayne Runans? And honestly, Sentinels is one of the most like obnoxious early game traits. But I think Vayne might just have this. Yeah, she hasn't been touched since at this point. I really thought maybe Skip Jesus had clap. this just because of how much sustain like an Irelia and an Aatrox frontline really is with the lifesteal and how much Not damage block. But the Vayne just wasn't touched until the very end and that hurricane slam most likely won th at least won them that first fight so now you're playing for a win streak <laughs> salvi high rolls the sunfire cape here he's hard chilling has a misfortune plays the misfortune gets two forgotten and salvi's going top four from this angle i mean i'd be surprised <laughs> if he doesn't just fast top two when you have a vein two opener runans into sunfire you're just fast top two at this point um he's very comfortable he's in his comfort zone right now um, scouting the boards doesn't see much. Nothing here can contest this vein. He's hard chilling to win streak this entire stage. Yeah, most people pre-leveling to four at, at that point too. Um, 
And usually I see people slam to Sunfire once they kind of, once the fight starts, so they can kind of see how much value they're really extracting from that. Because Sunfire, I do agree, is really good early, but it does fall off at the end, and then maybe you're sacrificing a chance at a Bramble or a Warmox, maybe better tank items, but this Leona is getting a lot of value from the Sunfire, so I ended totally. up being fine at the end. Yeah, up until like stage four, Sunfire is like, really valuable especially if you get the radiant sunfire in stage three that item is absolutely still atrocious even after the nerfs <laughs> uh one of my favorite radiants um, i'll get into like my favorite radiant items when we get there but the early sunfire slam here is is like really cost effective for salvi he's gonna be like destroying every every player he faces now would you take out this oh, wow. mf for like a better ranger or honestly just, like, a ranger? he's got a pair of mfs here he's gonna get an mf2 in no time um, yeah. That is a lot of DPS. Um, MF is really, really scary because once she gets like all those forgotten stacks, she just starts like melting teams. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. He's always pre-leveling here, and he wants to get a ranger in on the next on the next round. I'm wondering because these are not MF items right now. So is this like a Draven angle? I guess we're not yeah. fully committed to forgotten. But if you are getting a, like. A lot of stacks and yeah oh he's totally committed oh he's committed that. at this point but... he's committed to forgotten he's definitely gonna play a draven from this angle um wh when you're like roll two mfs at uh, two three you already know you're playing draven that's that's just the rule of thumb here um <laughs> he's gonna pre-level here for sure and try and get a ranger i'm actually really excited to see what he takes on carousel though because he he's built two full items so he's probably either going for like sword for draven item or potentially more frontline um, depends what he gets left with. But he did lose this round to Skirm Scent, which is absolutely obnoxious. I Every time I face Skirm Scent, I regret my life decision of not playing Skirm Scent opener. So is it safe to maybe go for like a glove or a bow if you can? Because Last Whisper being kind of a flexible, good AD item, good for Draven. Or are you going more towards like a tank item? Like something to supplement that Sunfire? So I think he he's going. He wanted to go for the recurve, but I think he changed his mind here. I have no clue what he's going, but he might want BT. Yeah. So he's going a cloak here because he's probably just playing Draven out, right? He just wants the BT um, potentially here. Um, I want. He hits the misfortune two star. Unbelievable! Three misfortunes back to back and on thresh. two three and yeah. two five. This is absolutely a high roll. What is this? I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> this is so... Ah, uh, Salvi, just just player deafing the entire lobby here. MF2 this early is is really, really good. Um, I do want to see, however, um, how, how much DPS she's going to pull off versus this, like, insane front line on Simply's, uh, Simply's end. What do we got? Legionnaire. And there she goes. Not much of a synergy the for Voitech there. there. But it's a Leona too with two tank items. So it, it did take a while, but the Sunfire burning through that. Yeah, and I mean, close, that but, Syndra, if yeah. that was a Syndra too, that would have been real close. Makes 10 <laughs> here, is very healthy, has the Hecarim, plays the Hecarim, four wow. Forgotten's in, two Knights. He's hard chilling for the rest of stage two here and stage three potentially if he gets like upgrades on his front line well the shop is just telling him to, to go forgotten i've never seen Man. So a lot of these players play so flex and they let the shops dictate it but i've never seen a shop scream more forgotten but is there anyone else going forgotten it's usually not too popular not too contested so hey this works out and absolutely i've seen draven in salvi's previous comps before so it's definitely a composition he's comfortable with yeah, totally. I mean, Draven is one of those units that, like, doesn't usually top one, but consistently can get you a top four, um, which is which is what I like about Salvi's playstyle specifically, is that he really likes just going for the consistent top four, um, which which I struggle with a lot, because as a player, I, I just, like, I have a very, like, volatile playstyle of first or eighth, and people can vouch that I go, I go eighth a lot. Um, <laughs> I go eighth quite a bit. Um... Leona too here. He probably wants to pop the Sunfire off. He's thinking about it. Yep. Takes the Sunfire off. Wants to put on a higher value unit like Hecarim here, but... Um... Honestly, I would have just kept the Sunfire on the Leona here. 
But I guess he, he wants to put it on Hekka, because he gets more value out of it when it's a Hecarim 2-star. Um, but for now, his front line is, like, absolutely insane, so I don't think it even matters. I mean, yeah, that Hecarim's going to have a lot of survivability. He gets even another Cavalier online, and if you decide to maybe change your positioning, I've seen oh some people, like... Oh my god! What is this? Team, Drops a Hecarim! They... Yep. Out of the box. Okay, this guy, he's just playing on a different level. He's just better than all of us. <laughs> this is really good. It's like he's in a very safe spot. Puts the Sunfire back on Leona. That sent us kind of bait too, because it's like, oh, another Cannoneer would be nice if you wanted to put your eggs in that Misfortune basket. Mm -hmm. But maybe at the next level, like you think about that, because your front line is super solid. You got three units in the front line and two damage units. So yeah, I'd say the Senna comes in next. Mm -hmm. Um, if he was win streaking, he probably would have leveled to six here. Unfortunately, he did lose a round in stage two. Oh, Jara running the um, Draconic opener with the Sunfire on the Poppy. 40 gold and 76 HP. Um, he's pretty healthy for Draconic opener here. Um, but Salvi says not today. Drops him for four units and drops his HP pretty low, actually. 66 is a little scary here for Jaro. Um... I would love to see what Rosdredo is doing. 90 HP on stage 3, and I don't know if he is playing Draconic, but I would assume so, because that man is a Draconic. Holy smokes. Salvi, <laughs> could you please? Oh, wow. Rosdredo rolling here for the Draconics, gets the Nunu. Does he play the Nunu over the Poppy? He's thinking about it. He hovers it, does play the Nunu in. Wants to put the brand in, sells the poppy, puts the brand in, puts the Callista in, gets the A-bomb online. Does he put the Sunfire on the Nunu? Yes, he does. Has the Trap Claw. He's hard chilling. 90 HP, Spell Weaver, Abomination Brawler in. He just didn't hit the Draconic, unfortunately. He's looking for one Draconic unit. He's just missing set. Really cool to see that he also slammed a Banshee's Claw this early. It's usually an item that seems like an afterthought later on, or even something you want to ra wait on for Radiant items, but this will really protect whether whatever his backline decides to be. Is it a Velkaz, a Heimer, Teemo? Who knows what the future holds? Especially when you were able to build up your Eco Sounds with a little bit of Draconic at the beginning, but now that you get to win on a three win streak, this is looking super good for, for Rez. The double brand shop here. Absolutely increasing his DPS. That just doubles his DPS right there. Um, so with the trap cloth thing, I think that's a that, that's a little bit of my fall here. Um, I I slam trap cloth every single game as soon oh, as yeah? I get a belt and a glove. <laughs> if I already have sunfire in the bag and I have a, a glove, it's always trap cloth. So he's definitely here um, showing off what he what he's learned from 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 the Dax right now. Um, misses the trap cloth on the brand here, swapping sides, but. He's 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 a little nervous right now because he doesn't have Draconic in on 3-3, but he's 90 HP, so he's hard chilling. Faces off Skip here. Skip is running like a slew of synergies. He's got like everything. He's got the Kennen, the Hellion, the Aatrox, the Skirms, the Sentinels. He's got everything in here. Can you tell me more about this positioning? Because like he was kind of figuring the left or the right and ended up on the right where I usually see Abominations uh, compositions really center on that left side. Maybe more more so when the Velkos comes out, it's a little bit more vulnerable than a Zyra, but I wonder who he was trying to target going on the right. So I think I think he just scouted really quickly and like checked to see where everyone's like positioned. Um, but sometimes I do this thing where like last second of every round, I just swap positions to the other side. Um, just out of like, uh, you know, just just fearful of like everyone just scouting my board because I'm win streaking and like trying to position on the opposite side of me. So he might be doing that. I think it's just it's just um, it's just he's just scouting and looking where everyone's at and just moving to the opposite side here. Gets the yeah. tier, wants the Shoujin. Um, already has a brand too. Still is not hit Draconic, but he's really rich. He's wind streaking. He's hard chilling here. Yeah, I wonder if he wanted to keep just the extra copy of Zyra, but you can always scoop it up later. Like if you randomly get a Velkos and you want all four of those spell weavers, well, Zyra is part of that. Um, but we'll see. There's also two, at least we noted two abomination players of Jero and Rez. So I wonder how many people can really contest abominations until they all just kill each other off because no one can find like, I don't know, they're all going to be, I'm guessing, competing for Velkos. So Zyra is that great item holder for now, but then Velkos, Heimer, Teemo, etc. It's, it's Absolutely. going to be busy. 
Basing off against Seek here, Seek is really healthy. Both 90 HP, he's got a Lucian on his board, he's got the Udyr with the Runans. Gonna be dropping Resdretto here for 4 units of damage, which is fine. He's 90 HP, he's hard chilling, drop 10 HP, doesn't matter. Um, I think he's just worried that he doesn't have Draconics in yet, but honestly when you're this high HP, I don't think it even matters. Um, has the option to go Earth Angel, he's gonna insta-click that. He's insta-clicking Earth Angel here. That item, in my opinion, is definitely like S tier. Um, so I wanted to talk about, yeah, I wanted to talk about Radiant items a little bit. When it comes to like the AP items, I think Earth Angel is definitely S tier. Um, that is like an insta cop for me, usually like most of the time. He already has Trap Claw, but does go for the Trap Claw, which is interesting. Um, the double Trap Claw here. Um, I don't think that's the play I would have made, but I think, I, I don't know what he's scared of. I think he's just scared of the other Zyra players. Um, quite an interesting pickup there. I don't think I don't think I would have done that. Um, so in my opinion, Trap Claw is definitely S tier. But when you already have a Trap Claw slammed, uh, you don't go for another for a second one. Um, so the thing with um, Radiant Seraphs um, is that it's it's literally like one and a half of like a normal Seraph. So you get like an extra one and a half Seraphs on your unit, and it's absolutely bonkers on Heimerdinger late game. That thing just destroys boards. Um, facing off against Salvi's board here, really healthy still, 94 HP, has the vein, took a ch uh, Radiant BT, which is amazing for Draven, that's like, top of the line. Hits and the Galio. Skip also got a Radiant Bloodthirster, so kind of leading that more skirmisher route, and with that Deathblade mm. Slam, it's could be a Jax game. I don't usually put a, a Death Blade on my Jax, but you you make with what you got. I, I, I think it looks more of like an Akshan angle for Skip, but he's oh, just okay. a little, yeah, he seems like a little like under, like 67 HP, but he's like almost level seven with 52 gold. He's hard chill and he wants to play Akshan from this angle. DB, and he has the recurve component, so he's looking for the Runans now. So it's just uh, BT, DB, and Runans, and then you just have your perfect Akshan. So he's just trying his best to stabilize here and then build towards um, the Akshan in, in the late game. Um, I'm very interested to see how long he rolls for here, because he can't really afford to. Hits the Lulu 2, hits the Kennedy 2, gonna be picking both of those up, has an Aphelios, swaps the Aatrox out for the Aphelios, plays Rangers here? Question mark? Yeah, it's Does like play Rangers. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. The Deathblade is super good on Aphelios, and the Bloodthirster makes sense too. Why not? Yeah. Um, because that's what that here with the Jax too. He's gonna mow down uh, Skip here. That Jax is about to mow him down. This oh, Jax is yeah. absolutely a a heartbreaker here for Skip. But it, it it looks like a beatable Jax too. Because, yeah, you get a little bit of life still with the Hodge, but not as much as a Bloodthirster. Uh, you don't have a Hurricane, so you're doing single target damage. So, yeah, you might not be able to CC him, but that Jax is beatable. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at where he is right now, he's 37 HP. He's just trying his best to just not bottom four at this point. Probably opts for a Rage Blade here, I'm assuming. Yep, does go for the Rage Blade. Um... I don't think he picks up the Syndra, does he? He does pick up the Syndra, ends up playing it over the Olaf. Ends up rolling as well, which is... He realized he's just not as stable as he thought he was. Want Ash? Over the Varus, probably? I think he's just trying to hit any two-star he can get his hands on at this point. Um, gets the Galio in, rolls again, rolls again, rolls again, hits a Varus too, which is okay. Um, I don't think this board is any better than the one we just had. So we just lost a lot of gold here, and we're not even more stable than we were before. I'm a little scared for my boy Skip here. Does get four Nightbringers in, which is good. Oh, there's so we're going to be online. dropping the cannon. <laughs> the Draven is online. That is, oh, that is... Salvi. That's... That's, Z yeah, it's Zue, yeah. His Draven is looking real good right now. He's hard chilling, but this Aphelios does hit like a truck. And might just win the round. So I'm looking at Salvi's board, and yeah, Salvi did manage to find a Draven, but it's Ooh, only a one-star Draven, no and match. managed to scoop up a Shoujins for his MF, so this is going to be the battle for Forgottens, but I'm seeing, uh, you know, the Draven 2 that we just saw. I think it's going to be successful at this point. And well, maybe if Salvi finds a Draven 2, but yeah, he's in first, so.
Absolutely, yeah. He's he's hard chilling. I mean, I knew from 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 the gay like when he hit the MF two, when he had the vein two. This man is just hard chilling to go top two this game. I'm not worried about Salvi at all. He's in a very comfortable position here with amazing driving items, amazing MF items. Um, has a great front line. Is looking to go eight and roll it down on eight probably um, from this angle. Is scouting the Aurelia three, which is actually scary. Um, has a ribbon two. Moves to the left side? Oh, actually decides not to. So he's just gonna go 8 here. Does end up fighting the Aurelia 3 player that moves sides. Um, so the Riven gets like premium access into the back line here. But is it enough to face the Draven in a 1v1? And it is! And absolutely drops the Draven, drops the rest of its steam. That's a huge hit. Stavi does get dropped here. The, the Aurelia 3 is actually obnoxious has uh, Sentinels in, so that really is not going down anytime soon. Seems like Seek is also maybe going for a Ribbon angle. All the items on Ribbon, maybe even going for reroll, Nidalee, Ribbon, which has been my flavor of playing ranked because I feel like no one touches Dawnbringers. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, it's a pretty strong opener and the AD items fit Ribbon just as much as Jack. So it's about kind of which one you hit. That's, that's kind of my play style. So I like already what Seek is doing and the fact that you hit an Irelia three star, which is, I feel pretty crazy at stage four considering how strong Sentinel Skirmisher really is early and how many people usually contest it but everyone has split off towards forgotten angles and abomination angles so it's really left these sentinel skirmishers pretty free absolutely um he hard levels to eight here to put the rel in i'm assuming um went for a glove on carousel which honestly i don't know what he's doing with that glove he's probably is he selling this raven with a jg on mf maybe why Make is something? he thinking he's thinking of selling his draven but I no. But there's for no what? Way. Like... Okay, there's no way. Yeah, I saw him like hover it, and I was like, "What are you doing? Hovering the jack?" Yeah, he's like hovering the jacks, and thinking of selling his draven for jacks here, but he doesn't do it. He has a pair of dravens. I mean, you're fine here. Um, he just wants to get Jackson for ironclads, probably. He picked up a glove on carousel, and now he's facing the Aphelios of Skip. That did hit Aphelios too. Now, um. But honestly, oh my god, that Aphelios hurts. Holy smokes. Um, Jax is really healthy. That Jax, man. That Radiant QSS item on Jax is absolutely obnoxious. Um, especially if you have a healing item on Jax. If Jax rolls like healing Hodge, it's absolutely obnoxious. Gets another Jax. Does he roll uh, here? But you need Skirmisher 3, sense. so this would have to be a, a pretty big pivot. I Honestly, feel like Jax yeah, really needs totally. that skirmisher three. Totally. Um, recently, when I've been playing Jax, I've been opting not to run skirmishers. Like in the late game, I oh. usually just play Jax randomly without a skirmisher. I feel like most of the time it doesn't really matter. Um, when you have like a really like strong end game with volley two and a bunch of frontline, um, you could just run like Jax on his own. But Viego is an insane unit to run, so you usually get the skirmishers in. Um. Facing yeah. off against Resdreto here, who did end up hitting um, Draconix, I think. Yep, with with um, with his with his board, did roll down to zero. Didn't hit a Heimer. Has Aniko's help. Doesn't have his Shojin yet, so he's gonna get. Um, pro he's probably gonna lose this round, but not as hard as. Um, yeah. Not as hard. Well, Rez just has so many components on his bench, too. Like, three of them, and a Nico, which is unlucky. Mm. And so just greeting to chickens to just make the best <laughs> item possible. I mean, his only damage item was an Archangel Staff, so that, that pretty easy loss, or pretty obvious loss there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's um, he's just settling for the Velkaz now, unless he hits, like, a very lucky Heimer within the next round. Um, he's just settled. He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna play a Velkaz here. Try my best to get a top four from this angle. Um, that's that's just the nature the nature of the roll down. You roll down four five when you have Draconics. You hit a Heimer. You go first. You don't hit a Heimer. I'll see you in eighth place. Um, but he does try and salvage it with a Velkaz here. So let's see. He's gonna roll down to zero for sure. Um, rolls picks up Akshan. Picks up oh. Garen. Oh, we're moving on to Scipius here. Who also has a very stable board, actually. I don't I don't think he's gonna move. 
Yeah, yeah he's the fine. Yeah, too. Oh, so now he has position against the Heimer, so it's like probably not that right corner. At least he's like one hex off, so maybe he dodges the Heimer turret, but it's about how do you want to position against that? Yeah, and because of the roll down that um, Skip did earlier, he's like hard stuck on level 7 right now. Everyone's like level 8, he's like not even close. So he's, he's trying his <laughs> best, but he does have a very stable board to be fair. Um, I don't know how it does against an Ironclad Jax with QSS Titans Hodge here. That and is... And you don't have Last Whisper. Nope. That is just gonna mow you down again and again and again and drop him to the Blessing. What I, what I loved about that fight, though, is that the Syndra, right, has Shoujins, and she yeeted the Diana before the Diana could even ult. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely, that's, yeah. That's one way. Uh, I mean, at this point... He's just trying to play for top four. He's going to go A. He's going to pop his blessing. It's a sword, which it does nothing for him at this point. Probably just like a throwaway Diana item here. Um, Does not pick that up. He's looking for some upgrades. He needs like... needs a couple of upgrades, honestly. Without Last Whisper on your um, Aphelios here, if you're not running Akshan, like you just can't run, run through Ironclads. It's really hard to beat Ironclad comps. Ooh. Do we like the volley? Uh, I couldn't get it in time. He wanted that volley too. I, he should have just yeah. like dropped Kennen. Slams that. Z weights. Draven looks really scary. But I'm pretty sure Aphelios just drops it into alts. So are Unless you just, just stacking this hex tag on the Syndra just because you have other items on her? Because I feel like the hex tag would have been better on the uh, Fiddlesticks, maybe? Or even, I mean, the Shoujins and the hex tag on Fiddle. Yeah, so, um. Skip apparently is the best uh, fiddle positioner in the entire world, self-proclaimed. Um, so <laughs> I've yet to see good positioning on this fiddle six, so I am waiting for it. Um, I see the fiddle six just like in the middle of the map, so I'm just waiting for him to like show me and teach me um, how he positions fiddle sticks here. Man, this shop just keeps giving him Sejuani's. Does hit the Ivern too, so this Revenant frontline is online. Of course, uh, two of them are just. Two of them, one star. The Ivern is two stars. Simply star, so might just good. drop this round. Five HP, zero eight, seven HP. I mean, we might see like two people drop um, this this round. Fighting Resdreto here, who's on thirteen HP, does have a it's Timo a two now. What? Absolutely great. Well played. He had the Nico's help. Probably bought two Timos off shop and then copped the Timo two with the Nico's. Really healthy position here for Resdreto. Um, and he does, has double Trap Claw on his Teemo, so that Aphelios is doing no damage to the Teemo. Teemo absolutely does get the ult off, but he does drop Resjetto here! The Teemo does not get to pop Cruel, does not get to play the game. Resjetto in tears Resjetto right now. is so sad. So that first Teemo cast went to the left side only towards his tanks, didn't touch the Aphelios at all. So it's like, without that Shoujin, it takes a while for the first couple of casts to come online. And with the double Archangel, all that scaling comes off of how many casts you can do. And until the third or fourth cast hit Aphelios, Aphelios had destroyed most of everybody. Um, so wow, that really came down to Timo's target. Yeah, Timo's targeting. That's why like, I, I always say this time and time again, how Timo is extremely inconsistent as a carry if you have him as like a solo carry. Um, and, and I really hate playing Timo as my only solo carry. Like I hate seeing him just drop his, his shrooms onto like a useless unit in the corner and just forgetting the entire clump of units right in front of him. And it is just really sad to see sometimes, but I mean, that is the nature of running Teemo. Um, does hit the Lulu. His frontline is really good. He just doesn't have like a secondary source of damage. He's literally just relying on this Teemo to, to carry his fights. And I don't think he's going to be winning against this insane Fiddlesticks and Jax combo unless like Teemo drops like three shrooms it perfectly hit the Jax. back to back. Doesn't hit the jacks. Fiddle doesn't get to play the game though. So this might be a clean sweep. Nice. Very clean here. The jacks still popping up, but Teemo Shrooms just destroys that thing. Which is yeah. free. I always Too hold free. my breath until Jax is dead because Jax can 1v6 sometimes, but Absolutely. once that giant minefield hit him all at once, it like went from 80% health to zero. Ooh, so that is a great, great hit for him. Too. Fiddle too yeah. there is really strong for him as well. Um, as predicted, Z-Way and Simply both dropped in the round. 
um, before, so they're playing for top six right now. I mean, everyone in this lobby is playing for second. I mean, this guy's got a Teemo too. You got to be playing for second at this point, right? Question mark. Yeah, the double Banshee trap claw too. So this, it's gonna take a while to get to this Teemo, and there's just no get, getting through it when you have so much CC in the front line with the Rail, the Ivor, and the Volley, and then the Fiddle is going after your back line. So it's. It's scary, but we'll see if this Nidalee can access it. That's a that's a ribbon now. that's coming straight towards your team, oh my guy. The poly. Absolutely terrible positioning here by Resdreto, but does it even matter? Might not matter, but that ribbon is still alive and his team is dead, so his main damage source is off the board. I don't think he can make it through this ribbon unless this fiddle is dead now. <laughs> Yep, Wait. you cannot make it through this ribbon. ribbon. Does the Nunu eat it in overtime? The Nunu, <laughs> holy smokes. Oh the my Nunu God. stomps on the ribbon in the overtime cleanly. Resdreto gets to live for another day. Holy, my heart is racing right now seeing Resdreto clutch these fights. Z and simply out eighth and z weight in seventh. So z weight at least we saw, was one of the Draven players and Jero... And Rez on last life. Let's Gets see, a please. decap for his Teemo as well. Rez Dreto is playing for first at this point. That is a lot of damage on his Teemo. I would not be surprised if he just fast firsts with the correct positioning in every single fight from this point onwards. Well, one, that's it. It's like positioning only. You're on four HP. There is absolutely one just mistake. Takes one mistake as he rolls it down. Looking Ooh, for hits the Lulu, Lulu too. too. That's a great, it. huge upgrade. Absolutely huge upgrade for him. He has like a Rel too that's in there just for the sake of being in there. Has no synergy whatsoever. But if it does get a cast off, cast off, it is it is it is quite good. Um, like you would rather be playing, um, like honestly, just a, a Mystic if the lobby's like real. Yeah. So into this guy, you would rather be playing a Mystic over the Rel. But he does have a Teemo too, and if the Teemo does target one time into the Heimer, does he target twice though? Does he throw the shrooms twice though? That Teemo's getting really low though. That Teemo drops. Now it's just a battle of the fittest between the A-bombs, but that A-bomb is not going down. That A-bomb is not going down. His fiddle is still alive and Resdreto drops to Jaro's wow. A-bomb. And not Jaro had picked a Radiant Shogun. And Salvi drops one. the skip as well. Wow. Top we almost four had our top four locked in. Yep, oh, we it's do. locked in, yep. Seek wow. and um, Salvi did not get to top four this game. Absolutely unlucky yeah, for Salvi it. here. You said Salvi was. I absolutely to top four. jinxed it. I mean, if you look at these like boards right now, like some of these boards are absolutely insane. That Jax board is just bis Jax. You've got Heimerdinger, Timo dual carry. You got Riven three. You got your Aphelios, Volibear two, Fiddle two. So apparently Skip is teaching us here how to position Fiddle six. I would like to see what this Fiddle six does in this fight. <laughs> Doesn't get to do anything because he gets Zephyred. Um, so we don't get to to see how how amazing his Fiddle six positioning is. His Aphelios gets grabbed here by the enemy Thresh hook. I don't think he gets to be Jax ever. Not in a million years. Um, when you don't have Lost Whisper, you don't have Auction two. That Jax just steamrolls your entire board. You just don't get to play the game. Wow, that is a dominant win from uh, Lelouch it's, there. Oh it's my god. It's not even close, but he does lock himself into top three. Jaro drops. Um, I think he's still looking for his tier two Rel here. He cannot find her. That Riven is absolutely... Deeks in first also with that, who was the one who hit the Ivrelia really three, like in stage four, had, and got the Riven three online. And we saw the power of Riven and how she was able to like one V five. Yeah. As the, I think the Radiant Bloodthirster we saw on them at some point. And it's insane. The Hurricane, great item. So you're not just single targeting your way through. It's, she can get, get through an army quite quickly, but uh, Skip's all positioned on the right side and the Riven's yeah. on the left. Yeah, Skip, wait, that Syndra cast was really awkward. So it grabbed it and then dropped it down. Um, so Riven's actually in a good spot for the battle here, but can it get through? Yes, it will. That is a Radiant Bloodthirster. That Riven is not dropping anytime soon, but will Aphelios be able to ult? Nope, doesn't get it. Both boards are fighting Riven. Riven drops on the other board, but Riven does lean. Oh my god. 
It is actually... The Wait. Skip got third. Okay, there we go. The skip with the Aphelios got third, so now it's between Seek and Lelouch. Yep, you and said the Lelouch. Ribbon. I always, like, Lelouch, Lelouch, but someone could be feeling like I mean, I, I just called him I just called him Lelouch, but I mean... Okay, cool. I'll follow it's, you. Lisa. It's up to interpretation, <laughs> you know? All right. For I mean, this Jax comp, what we were talking about earlier, how, like, this is, like, pretty much BIS Jax at this point. Um, but that Riven is absolutely scary. If that Viego doesn't get a hold of his Riven, um, then I would be a little scared. But honestly... Oh, Rakan 3, too. Mm-hmm. Ah. The Aurelia 3, Rakan 3, Riven 3. He's going for all the three stars here. He, he got to catch them all. He's definitely uh, embodying his inner Pokemon trainer. That here. RFC Viego I saw too, man. I don't get to see that too often. All right, Ripon's on the right side. Viego RFC Rageblade be... QSS Viego in the back here. Honestly, this is looking... It's it's close. Like, if the Dino Riven... Up, the this movie. Riven does not get to play the game. I don't think this Riven is going to get to play the game. It's just oh, getting knocked no. back and forth. Yeah, I really the Jax is oh, on it. The it Diana ults it. Gets CC'd again. Doesn't get to play the game. The Jax steam rolls. He oh, one he's more, he's going fast first. It's not even close here. Four knights, three ironclads. Not even this Riven can get through that front line. I think Louch here is taking the swift first. Um, unless, like, C gets, like, a miracle. Can you break um, down this positioning for me for this Jack? So you have the Q the Radiant QSS. I would think that would make sense to frontline it, but decides to kind of put it in the second row. What do you think about that? So I think he just wants his like um his like front lines, his knights to like take the brunt of the damage. He doesn't want his jacks to get dropped too fast before he stacks the titans here. So he wants to stack up his titans safely, and then he just wants to like steamroll the whole fight. But honestly, with this positioning on the Riven. Um, Jax gets to go to the left, Aphelios is, uh, Diego's in the back grabbing units, Jax goes in, his Riven gets CC'd, the Riven? honestly, <gasps> it gets CC'd Bye. again, and again, and again, honestly at this point, it's a clear win for the Jax, if Diego ults, does get the ult off, and gets dropped to second place, clean win by Lelouch here. Absolutely. Louch with our first place wow. win. We'll be getting 10 points in our first lobby and just almost, I guess, halfway to the 24 checkmate mark. But wow. In second place for Seek, who had the Irelia 3 at stage 4 the, and ended up hitting the Riven 3. And I don't not don't think the Nidalee 3 hit, but it was a Nidalee 2 with a bunch of good mm -hmm. items. And I felt like the real difference at the end was like the positioning of the Viegos. Yeah, I mean, at that point, like, when your Riven doesn't have QSS or RFC, you're pretty much surrendering to the fact you're not going top one. See, the thing is with Riven <laughs> is that if you just don't have, like, that, that Radiant QSS or, like, Radiant RFC on her, she just gets, like, knocked up again and again and again in Perma CC. It doesn't get to play the game in the late game when you have, like, Vala Bears and Viegos and all these, like, really hard-hitting CC units. It just doesn't get to play the game. Um, so the fact that he went top two there is quite impressive, actually. Um, but Jax is just extremely impressive with the four knights, three iron clouds there. He cannot do damage to that. Yeah, I wonder if Lelouch just had originally like Nidalee or some other skirmisher and then was able to move those items to Viego because that RFC Rageblade QSS Viego and it was two star kind of insane. And even though he was just converting a maybe some useless units like Nautilus or something like that, just obviously Viego traps, it ended up still turning things around. And even if you don't get the full conversion on Viego, the amount of CC that Viego does is so important in a fight. Yeah. Especially if he grabs like prime target units. Like if you grab that like two star and the two star carry in the back or the three star carry in the front, like it's just over. Like you, you're just surrendering your unit to Viego's demise at that point. Um, it's like, yoink, that's my unit now. Thank you very much. I have a three star ribbon on my team. Thank you very much. Um, it's just absolutely um, a, a BG at that point. And a bunch of the forgotten players in the bottom four, like Z Weight with the Draven went seventh. Salvi, someone who hit the vein two, and you thought had a top four comp. Salvi ended up in fifth place. Just even he, did, he ended up pivoting the Jacks. I called it. I told you he was going to pivot to the Jacks. He did it. He had two Dravens, he was going for the Draven too, but ended up pivoting to Jax. I mean, <sighs> unlucky, BG. And there's the points of how this is being broken down. So it's 10 and then 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1.
there we go it's, it's yep. as easy as that and remember you have to hit the 24 point mark and then you have to get a first so it kind of like unlocks it or mm -hmm. if you suck at getting first places then you better top four your weight of 40 points because that's the only other way you can get to our grand prize 500 bucks for first place and then everybody gets a walk get to walk away with a piece of the pie uh, everyone even eighth place gets 25 mm -hmm. bucks Uh, absolutely. I mean, the Lauchir showed us like a very, very good game. Honestly, um, definitely bringing in like uh, a really, a really stable comp in the mid game, rounding it up late game with Guarantee Viego too, um, showing us that he does have the potential to to maybe cop another first or two and then just win the whole thing on his own. I mean, I'm excited to see if he if he's consistent or um, or if he's gonna you know low roll and go BG. Yeah, and speaking of Lalouch, our first place player, he plays for Ananimo Esports. I hope I'm saying that right. But either way, they're one of the 40 players that were invited to e the EU West Latin America playoffs to qualify for Worlds. Ended up in 22nd, didn't make it past the close qualifiers, and misses out on Worlds. But there's only one person out of all of these eight that are going to, to Worlds. A lot of them competed in these qualifiers, whether in Latin America or YMEA. But... You know, you were maybe thinking maybe Skip could be the strongest in the lobby and ended up third, so not too far off. Yeah, uh, totally. I mean, Skip, uh, you know, I, I've, I've, I've only got to like know him recently. Um, he's a really good player. He's very consistent with his play style. Um, is the self-proclaimed best fiddlesticks EUS and global. <laughs> um, definitely showing off that he can... Uh, consistently top four here. Very impressive. Very impressed with his playstyle there, where he was initially going for the Akshan, ended up settling for the Aphelios and just rounding his comp around with like volley two, fiddle two, and, and frontline. Um, so quite quite a good game from Skip here. Honestly, very impressed. Yeah, and then a mix of draconic players uh, and different placings. We had Resretto with the Zyra Abomination who went sixth. You had J Jero with the Abomination Zyra, the Draconic star who went fourth. So what's kind of the key to success with Draconic? Is it kind of like Fortune Jail where maybe you get locked in it for too long and that's when you kind of sacrifice too much HP and get the bottom four? Or what, what's, what are the tips you have for Draconic players? So usually if I hit Draconic at any point in stage two, I'm always playing it. Um, and if I don't hit it by 3-2, I'm never playing it. So that's usually like the rule of thumb. So any point in stage 2 I hit it, I'm playing it. Any point, uh, if I hit it any point, like, not at 3, like, if it's 3-2 and I don't have Draconic and I'm not playing it. Um, because at that point it's like, um, I need to like have a stable board and I, I, I'm either like bleeding too much, um, and I need to like save my, save my HP pool. So, it, it's very like hit or miss, I feel, especially after the nerfs recently to A-bomb. So you can't like consistently, um, like or just hit the a bomb and then like be stable um you have to like build towards it um early on especially you have to like uh, uh have like good items and round out like your front line and your nunu and sunfire and make sure you have like some kind of dps in the back to round out draconics because the draconics in and of themselves are like very weak units so you got to like round it out um i recently have been experimenting with sentinel draconic which is oh. a really nice way to round out draconic because sentinel is extremely oppressive here we start off with the opening carousel though, and I'm assuming we'll see a repeat of game one where Resretto goes for the tier and Salvi does go for the, um, where is he? He went rot this time. Well, he low rolled. BG. BG. So <laughs> I thought he was going to go for the recurve, but he ended up uh, getting stuck with a rod. I still like that you have a Callista with a sword, which is a great AD item carrier, and then it's already a good start to Abomination if you can even hit it in the early game. I always get stuck on whether I want to go Abomination or not, because it's finding that damn Nunu that's the <laughs> that's the hardest part, because unless it drops from neutrals, I feel like I'm always stuck looking for Nunu and how to build up from that. But oh, I guess a Callista too. Don't mind if I do. Absolutely. I mean, we see a Vayne 2 already, a Callista 2 already, uh, a Kled 2 already. I mean, everyone's hitting. This is a hit fest right now all about and i swear this early game is all about finding any pairs at this point it's even sometimes have better to have a two star and have you know really bad synergies than to have like the perfect synergies but having a callista two this early i think is is gonna be huge absolutely um doesn't have anything in his shop that can synergize here probably just ends up picking like yep just frontline um has a rod glove sword 
Honestly, not bad. Wait, we've got four veins on that board. Does he want to play vein reroll? I would love to see no. a vein reroll. I would <laughs> I love know, to see a vein reroll, man. That would be absolutely delight. Oh, man. At the very least, another Ooh. Draven item holder, but not bad. You got Cav 2 going. Yep, gets the Cavalier here. Doesn't have a, any Legionnaire to round out his Callista here, but does get two Cavs in. Oops. Yep, gets the two Cavs in. Might want to level and play um, just a random Varus, honestly. Yeah, it's the thing is, what's it adding? Are you adding something that's going to help your board, or do you just not want to yep, lose as many? Everyone Sells seems the Varus, to like gets the Nautilus. There we go. Yep. Um, I mean, usually if you have, like, um, some kind of, like, stable board, you just pre-level and get, like, good units. But if you have, like, a bunch of pairs, you just can't pre-level. You need to hit some two stars. So we see the vein with the recurve here and the vein on the bench. Uh, I would love to see Jerigo vein reroll. Uh, that would make my day, honestly. I've been seeing vein reroll in, in high elo lobbies recently quite a bit. Um, and they all go top three. They all go top two. Um... <laughs> I don't know what it is about like vein players, but they just hit everything. They hit vein three really early. They hit infinite frontline. It's just luck is on their side. So are you going like a ranger four, or ranger two with a vein reroll? So usually, you... yeah, usually with vein, I like to play two ranger and then just have like rage blade rune ends and then radiant hodge if I can get my hands on it, and then just play like infinite frontline. And then it's just at that point, it's it's. It's really strong. Gets the three skirms and slams Rage Blade. I like the early Rage Blade sword here. Really strong early game. I mean, at this point, it would be no surprise if he's playing for the Aphelios again. Because honestly, not many units synergize that well with the Rage Blade. Um, at least not in terms of like their best in slot items. Does end up moving left side here. Facing against Salvi who won his last round and has a new new set and slammed Rageblade Shoujin. Now I wonder what that's going to be. I wonder if Salvi's trying to go for some kind of draconic, but like you said, it's kind of stage two has to hit or else uh, getting a little bit late and behind on the eco that it provides. But hey, the Rageblade Sword wins out on the Rageblade Shoujin that Salvi had. So only winning back two units, but it's still a win streak that Skip can think about working around. Absolutely. I mean, looking at Salvi's board here, I see he's holding two Udyrs and a set and Shoujin Rageblade. I'm pretty sure this man just wants to play Draconic in the early game. Um, I've not seen Salvi run Draconic before, so this is definitely a treat for me. Um, quite excited to see this. Yeah, There's so a lot of Draconic players here. I'm <laughs> those Scream Heimer <laughs> items, but it's just... I guess a bit awkward to have a Velkaz with Rageblade, as I guess even, I guess it goes from Ziggs to Zyra to Velkaz to Heimer, if you had this perfect order of of AP users until you're capped out, but Absolutely. I think that's what I mean, was missing from the Heimers before, like in our last lobby, right, was Shoujin's mm, Rageblade, something yeah. to get these casts faster. Totally. I mean, I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised like if you play Aphelios with Shoujin Rageblade and then beat, uh, beat uh, DB on your last item. Shoujin's not that bad on Aphelios. I don't see people running it as often as 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 like maybe they should. Um, it's quite a good item. Um, but the problem is like you you skip out on the last whisper as we saw last game. Just could not face against the Ironclads. Um, so you definitely need um, some sort of like armor shred if you're gonna. Maybe play think Aphelios. about a tank item. Because you got two damage items and it's probably not good to make a third damage item before Radiant. Um, Absolutely. Definitely trying to go balance, but what do you do? I mean, there's... I always like building D-Claw. That's like just my go-to tank item and it was on a three cost, but Jero is going to scoop that up. And a tier for Salvi. Absolutely. Seeing a lot of really um, plural boards here. Um... Like last game at this point, like Salvi, Salvi had like a tier two MF and, you know, he had a tier two vein, tier two MF, and he was running like an extremely strong board. Uh, but now he's just running a Ziggs one. He's just chilling with a Ziggs one. Um, takes the tier, probably wants to play Archangel, so might just play Heimerdinger from this angle. Um, I do want to, however, 
see what's going to happen versus Resdretto, who's also planning to play uh. Draconic, but has only an Udyr 2, has a Nautilus 2 that I think he picked off off Carousel. Sejuani 2 as well. Has a lot of 2 stars. Already has the Archangel on the Ziggs. Definitely planning to play Heimerdinger yet again. Um, he did hit a Teemo 2 last, last game, which was uh, quite scary. Yeah, it's just the Ziggs one, even though it's got great items, it can cast really fast with the Shojin's Rage, Rage Blade. It's just not enough damage at, at one star. But hey, that would be a, a not bad holder of AP items. But my concern with going with the tier is that it's this is leading Archangels, which tells me that the Radiant item choice is probably going towards the tank side or even Radiant Thieves Gloves. Uh, so kind of limiting your options on the Radiant item. Has a Karma Riven in shop. I, he was like hovering it, thinking like what what he could do with this. Um, honestly, I would just play the Karma over the Ziggs here. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's just the Ziggs one. <laughs> yeah, but I think he just wants to lose this round and like continue his loss streak. But I don't think I think Karma wouldn't like have won this round regardless. Um, ends up selling, making twenty. That's a fine decision as well. If you're committed to playing. Um, Draconic into Heimer, then you do want to make as much money as possible, lose the round, get your lost streak, make your money, and go to Krugs. And Lelouch, uh, our first place of Lobby 1, was just seen on screen, uh, just won it, but is going for a Dawnbringer Riven build. I think I saw a Deathblade slammed already, so his decision, his direction has been made. Absolutely. Um, you can play a lot of things with DB Slam, honestly. I, I really love DB Slam recently. I've been playing like, um, I've been playing a lot more flex on ladder. So I've been playing more Aphelios, Maroc Sean. Um, you know, I'd even throw a DB on Jax occasionally every now and then. Um, DB is really, really flexible. A lot of damage, really good early game. That guy already has an Aphelios. Uh, we see the IE Last Whisper Slam. We see a lot of AD comps actually. Um, Salvi might be the only one running AP uh, apart from like Resdretto. We'll see if that ends up helping if everyone's gonna crowd around all the ironclads so this AP could be he's, free, but he's mad about that tier. He doesn't like that. Because he well, went tier on carousel. Get for going for tier mm. off carousel. Yeah, <laughs> he's mad about that. <laughs> he's not happy in this position. Gets the ash, sells the digs, plays draconic. Price the farm some He hit the vein three. Jero, GLG Jero, hit the vein three. I called it early in the oh game. I told you he was gonna play vein reroll. Does end up playing vein reroll. Absolutely a a a sight to behold here. I love that. Unfortunately, oh, we don't man. have his POV. I'd love to see it, but oh, yeah, we'll see him yeah. wreck. We'll see him wreck rounds right now. But his we'll his, his, his HP is not even that bad. There we go. There he is. Reroll. There he wow. is. He's 40 gold, Vein 3, Runans, has a recurve on his bench, does want to play Vein 3. Hold it out the gate. Right now his Vein is not that great. Wait till he gets a Rage Blade and that thing is unstoppable. Um, Jero might be playing for a first this game. Now I know I jinxed the last game, yeah. but you know, uh, I have my hopes up for him. But you're only like 13 HP off first. Your eco's not even that bad. And what, you're only a level behind everybody to hit vein three with mm. that kind of economy is super good for Jero. So yeah, I think now you can coast now that you hit your big power spike as we get a roll down from Salvi, trying to maybe two star this brand. This new new would be good. Make this abomination stronger and at least hits the brand two star and finds an Ivern. Absolutely, he has the Nunu pair here. He's 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 healthy. He's really healthy. I mean, I don't know if I would hold this Ivern, but it doesn't cost him any economy right now, so it's fine. Um, but as soon as the Ivern like costs me an economy, I'd probably drop it because I'm not playing that till stage like four or five. The two tiers here are really really hurting him. He's he's not happy about these two. He keeps hovering them, moving them around. He's like, God damn these two tiers, man. The well, Iron does Stimmy get a cast. Have a, Stimmy will have a reforge. You never know. Sometimes you get blessed with that, and that's like the only time that absolutely. You ever and I mean, in the late that. game, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the late game, you can also like itemize Timo as well, which actually like goes really well with tears. So it's not that bad. But when you're 67 HP, stage three two, and you're 21 gold, you're not really thinking of buying any Timos anytime soon. Yeah. Does hit a three turn egg there? I'm. I think. Yep. That three turn egg is actually really good for him. Only has an Ash one, so... And you just don't have the gold, especially only at 30, to roll for any more of those, and that's kind of your prime source of damage, and it's just like... 
the blue buff slam, I don't even think that would save him that much HP, so... No, yeah, he's definitely going for the Archangel. I would love to see Resdretto if he got, like, uh, Draconic online, actually. Um, because he was looking for it earlier, still doesn't have it online, doesn't hit, has four knights and two hellions though. Uh, he's in the same position he was last game where he was 3-3, still no draconics in, holding the Udyr. Um, I think he did roll down, but he didn't hit anything, so he didn't roll too much. Does have Nautilus too though, with a Sunfire, not bad. You can always go Fortnite Jax, four knights plus Jax, and yeah. even, you know, you were telling me you don't even need skirmishers, so no stress, but... I mean, with an Archangel slammed, I, I don't know how he's going to play Jax from that angle. I mean, <laughs> I just, Archangel Fortnite Jax, maybe that's a new tech. Me, that's a new meta. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Fortnite can really go with anything. Uh, but Absolutely. like now that I look at the items, yeah, you're right. This this Archangel is more of a, a Heimer thing, but... Yeah, he's looking for it. I mean, this guy is like 2020 Heimer into... Uh, Heimer, and if he doesn't hit, he's playing Valkaz. He's... He, he's he's been he's been mimicking my my first or eighth playstyle that I've been going eighth with a lot, so I'm glad that he's showcasing that you can actually go top four. Picks up a Negatron from Carousel, so maybe going for a D clock. I, think I he doubt this Chalice. Oh, there's a Belkaz. Huh? That would be yeah. That's better. a swap. Yep. There we go. Yep. He's he's, he's unsure. <laughs> he's unsure, but I think it is an insta swap. There we go. Yeah. I don't know why he's going Declaw here. I mean, we scouted the lobby and it looked like... I mean, that probably was like his only choice. Um, the fireball is always like, nice, and... annoying damage to backline people. That's like, I've never built Declaw up until the fireball uh, like addition happened. And I was Absolutely. Like, that buff was annoying. very necessary. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it's 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 been a great... Um, oh, he's facing Salvi here in the mirror matchup of both like trying to play like the same comp or similar comps, but... Definitely, Resdretto has the upper hand with the Valkaz here. Oh, Going the to Valkaz mow cast? down. Yep. Oh, the Zyra only got one cast off before the Valkaz just mowed her down. And I mean, Salve. the Valkaz only has a tier. <laughs> like... Salvi's not looking good this game. He's about to take a big loss and get dropped. The Valkaz just beaming your <laughs> Just the BM beam. After. I'd be really nervous to be Salvi right okay, now. Radiant. Radiant Shop. Well, this is. Yeah, it's just an instant Feels radiant bad. redemption. He d he always goes redemption here. I'm pretty sure. He's but hovering like dragon slow. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing with a second decline in AD lobby? Yep, cops the redemption. That is a great item. I do want to see what other people are taking as well. Ooh. Um, I just saw Salvi pick up a fr radiant frozen heart, and Skip is kind of scouting right now, but I'll see in a second. But I see a Radiant, Radiant Gargoyle frozen. getting picked up. Yep, this guy's still thinking. Is he really going to take the locket? Wow! Does take the locket. Skip, showing us the innovation here. Have not seen the locket pick up in a, in a very long time. I've never seen that item get picked up. I would love to see it in action here. Does well, give you a lot of frontline. You need a tank. You need a Absolutely. tank item because he made three damage items. And that was kind of my criticism of like, maybe you wanted to wait for the third one after you get Radiant, just in case it's all damage. And yeah. then you're really screwed. But see how this works. Absolutely. I've been having that happen to me a lot where I like base my play style on like what Radiant item I'm going to get. And then I low roll every single Radiant item and then I just go fast save. <laughs> Or when you go AP and you get all D AD, or if when you go AD, you always get an AP Radiant item. I'm I'm cursed no matter what. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, from this angle, it, it really looks like... I mean, the lobby's the lobby's not that high roll this time around. I mean, except for the Vayne. Vayne hit Vayne 3 like, at the start of the stage. So he's, like, coasting. Um, Resdretto is actually really healthy, given the fact that... Um, he quite low rolled his, his roll down, but he did hit a Nautilus 2 really early and a Sejuani 2 really early, which is insane frontline. Now has a Valkaz, so has the backline damage to back up, back it up. Hits a Belt and a Cloak here. Has a Rock on 2. He wants to play Aphelios here, does play the Aphelios, picks up Rock on 2. More than likely. Yep. Um. So how much is he missing out on that? He doesn't have Nightbringer going, and it's a one-star Aphelios. You only have two Ranger. Is this gonna crumble? Uh, we're have to, we're gonna have to wait and see. I mean, Sentinel is pretty 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 beefy. Sentinel does keep you alive, but when you're looking at like these other boards here, um, I don't think this Aphelios is gonna be able to do much against like the 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 tankier boards. Um. 
So his front line just gets to, like, crumble really quickly now, unless Aphelios, like, ults two, three times. Um, which he does all once, so he might just clear the rats here pretty easily. That Aphelios hurts. That Aphelios hits like a truck, and especially with the locket, his front line doesn't melt as fast um, as it would without it. So that's a really good pickup by Skip. Definitely helping his front line here. Meanwhile... Salvi! Okay. Yeah. Not looking good for Salvi. He's with the Zyra 2. He's looking for the Zyra 3 from the this point on. The Frozen Heart on Callista. Ah. You might as well just frontliner at this point. Oh! Okay, just a free Galio? Yeah, let okay. me pick up that. Triple Galio, level 7. No big deal. Give me Fiddle! We need this Fiddle, man. He is looking for the Fiddle. I think he's just surrendering to the fact he's playing Zyra 3 this game. Um, does hit the Fiddle. Ints okay. the Cell. Takes the Fiddle. Frozen Heart Fiddle. Frozen Heart is one of... Radiant Frozen Heart is one of Fiddle's best items right now. I, I would be quick to say it is his best item along with like the Radiant Morello. Um, those two items on him are absolutely beastly. I mean, um, Thray, who was a contender in um, in the qualifiers, who didn't make it, but was very close, uh, one point off, um, says that Radiant Frozen Heart is the best Radiant item that you could ever have. What? Um, really? Yep, yep, that's his opinion. He says Radiant Frozen Heart is the best item you could pick up. Um, I mean, I, I was baffled by that. I saw his tier list and like I see like the Frozen Heart in the S tier and I was like, wow, really? Okay, nice. Let me pick that up more often. I <laughs> oh, did. Oh, Teemo buy. Why is the Teemo with 32 HP? I don't know what he wants to do with that, but he's thinking of Shoujin. Is it yep. better than the Zyra 2? No, he's oh, going to play Teemo with, the, yeah, he's going to play with the Zyra, just the Shoujin Teemo here. Two recurves really do hurt when you're playing AP. It really hurts having two recurves on your bench. I mean, at this one, I would just slam RFC Teemo, honestly. When you're 32 HP and you're bleeding this hard, it's just RFC Teemo slam. That is a Nocturne that will access uh, his backline. It is Teemo. a Nocturne too, but you know, maybe, cast off. maybe he gets to kill a couple units before he dies here. You know? Oh, there's no That Nocturne is melting though. Table. That Nocturne is not doing anything. You know what? Oh, he heals back to full. He just like, heals back to full every it. time he spins around. That Nocturne does end up cleaning it up. Man, it looked really good for Salvi for a split second there. And the Nocturne just came back full force, full heal on every turn. Has the Heimerdinger. He's going to gun for it. He's gunning that Heimer. Is he not to... gunning that Heimer? I, he's gunning the Teemo with 25 HP. I'm actually... So scared for this guy. <laughs> I'm sweating bullets. Gunning the Teemo, I mean, at this point, you're like, all, all or nothing. I'm really sweating bullets for Salvi here. Well, we got just a glimpse of Seek, and we don't have Seek's POV, but he was going towards Nocturne, where stage four is the strongest for assassins. Now I'm wondering if Seek is going to fall off at 50 HP, because you need to hit that Nocturne three if you, I think, if you want to consistently make that Salvi top four. Here. But yeah, here comes the roll down for Salvi. Now you're at level eight, you're out of gold. What's happening to this Teemo? Inhale and exhale for Salvi here. Just takes the static, settles for it. And, you know, he, he he played his cards, you know, he was like, you know what, maybe I hit a Teemo on this roll down, who knows, 10 gold, maybe I hit a Teemo, does not hit the Teemo, pops the static, gets it, and tries to not go 8th. Um, he's playing again simply here with the Aphelios in the back, but that Zyra is quick to, to put him down. But is Wait, it enough? Not even close. Not even close. Aphelios does not care. Um... Here, he is left to a Sejuani and a Felios, but honestly, I don't know if he can drop that Sedge. He cannot drop that Sedge. There's no damage to drop that thing. Dude, this Lee Sin is living forever and a Sejuani too, and I really wasn't sure about this Aphelios, but he got up to 140 stacks, so just ended up popping off and scaling at the end. Is now closer to a new new 3, I guess. He's got a whole Abomination shop almost, so maybe you gotta clear some of this noise. Does not go for the Nunu shop. Does not care. Still rolling it. I have no idea how... He finally hits the Heimer. But does he sell the Zyra? I would sell Zyra. Heimer 1, I, I do like more than Zyra. But I think he does want to go for the Zyra 3. 
Man, it's it's a tough call here. On the wrong side for the Valkas as well. Oof. Hey that... man, you'd even get Draconic if you put the Zyra, or if you put the Hymer in over the Zyra, but I'm not sure how much eco really matters when you're at 16 HP. He's you know what, really that Valkas might just drop before it. the second cast here. It might just drop. Oh. It does get a cast, but it does drop. Uh, it might be close. Yep, it's not even close. Resdretto gets dropped. Resdretto's really healthy, though. Like, I am very impressed how healthy Resdretto is, given his early game. Um, rolling it down and not hitting Draconic, Ooh, settling for two. Knights. Fiddle 2 with a Frozen Heart here. Let's see if Salvi has learned anything from Skip's professional Fiddle 6 positioning. So I wonder if Salvi thinks maybe Zyra 3 would be better than a Heimer. So, any, yeah, any Zyra 3 is definitely play? better than a Heimer 1. Um, but, I mean, I would I would always play Heimer 1 over Zyra 2. But then you'd have to move those items, so just maybe holding out and greeting a little bit more for Zyra 3, and how can you do that? I think there's another player going Zyra, maybe even two, so it's like, it's a lot of contests. He's rolling this. for it. He hits a Zyra oh, and chop. Can he hit one more? I would love- he sells the Heimer! Oh my god, I'm on the edge of my seat oh, for this shocked. one. Oh, it's Wants the Ivern 2, wants the Zyra 3. I mean, that's his board. That's it. He's he's surrendering to the fact that this is his board. You got a Riven player, um, hitting it a 2 as well. That vein is really scary. Um, it is a 2-item vein though, so he, he will be looking for his third item on the next carousel. Edifelius is really scary. I mean, you don't get to play the game. If you're not running Ironclad into his weight here, you're not getting you're not gonna play the game. So oh that Ephelius does get <laughs> Oh, the A-bomb does run for the Ephelios, drops it! That frozen heart, that fiddle six, man. That's a lot of value. This is why you take Frozen Heart. We learn from the Great Thray, the tactical god. The Radiant Frozen Heart might indeed be S tier. I always look at close. like I always look at tier lists like the ones that like mismatch socks make and I see frozen heart in D tier and I just don't even put any logical thought into it. I'm like, no, it's D tier. But turns out even like it's just when people rank them, it comes up to how better is a Radiant item versus its normal version. And I think that's how people start to rank it. It's like Radiant Shoujins, how it's only a little bit better than normal Shoujins, but people will still use it because if that's the item you need, that's the Radiant you pick. But now has the Revenant's Pat, puts it on the Teemo, which is really good. Yeah, absolutely. That is just a GA for your Teemo. Maybe you get to, you get a nice Cruel off of it with the Lulu in. Um. I've seen Teemo Cruel clutch so many fights. It's actually atrocious. How many times I've lost and got like bottom four to just a cruel Teemo proc. It, it, it really destroys my day. I just end stream and just never go live again. <laughs> I just tilt. It just ruins my day. The Fiddlesticks here with the godly position. Wait, uh, I guess Salvi has not learned from Skip because that fiddle ulted backwards. That was really bad, but I don't think it even matters here. Um, that Ophelia should be dropping. And it doesn't even matter. Even with the bad fiddle ulti there, doesn't even matter. Skip gets dropped. Whoa! Survives on one. Not bad. It's like a five unit win in the 16 HP comeback from Salvi. I can't even believe it. And hits the Zyra three before we turn away. So we get oh, to maybe wow. see what Skip will be up to. Salvi might actually be able to this. go top four here. Skip, though, I mean, he is not in a good position. He's... He's struggling to maintain his board here. He's he's got two reforgers off the blessing. The vein is chilling in top one right now. I mean, he's he's just at this point, you just surrender your demise to this Velkaz, which you're on the wrong side for, unfortunately. Doesn't want to reforge. Oh, unlucky. If you didn't have that cab spot, you might might have thought about reforging the locket because I mm. know you were not too big of a fan of that. Hmm. I would have reforged anyway, but I mean, at this point, I don't think anything saves the Cephelios. Yeah, absolutely. Cops a fast eighth here. Types BG in the chat. And uh, yeah, go next. Simply also dropping. Wow, we got two living. drops in this round. Simply out. Okay, we were watching something else. So Seek and 
Uh, sixth place right now on Last Life, and Salvi's on a win streak. Meanwhile, Jero is 20 HP above the whole lobby, so he's just chilling. Last time we saw Jero was the Vein 3 that you were excited. You were thinking that was going to be a Extremely lobby Extremely excited. I, I can't wait to see him just sweep this whole lobby with a Vein. Um, I really would love to see that. Uh, I've been seeing it like occasionally in my ranked games, and it always seems to go first for some reason. A real, a real hidden gem. Um, ops for the QSS, gets the blessing, has great Velkaz items. Yeah, you just slammed Joel Gala here. How bad? Yeah, he's going for it. Yeah, pretty good. And you got the I Hellion you... Spat on the bench if you really care about doing that. Yep, that's a Hellion Spat for sure. It gets your Teemo, gets your Teemo going. You just put that anywhere, honestly. Oh. I want to see a, a Hellion Abomination though. <laughs> so oh, I've seen if those. You want to receive that. They tickle. They do nothing. <laughs> really? Oh, man. They're tickle beasts. They come in all big and strong, but they just tickle units. Oh, man. This oh. already has the Revenant proc. This man, that Zyra 3 really hurts. But he does have the Declaw on the A bomb. Might be enough to stop the Zyra from, um, from getting to play the game here. Is it enough though? Redemption and Declaw on the A-Bomb here might clutch out this fight for um, Resdretto. Uh, no, oh, it's so strong. close, but the other A-Bomb with the Frozen Heart, Radiant Frozen Heart, might just win this with a little Teemo in the back there. Salvi gets to live another day. Man, Salvi really brought it back from like looking like a fast 8th to, to actually like maybe top 4 -ing. Yeah, Salvi is on a 5 streak right now, so able to accumulate some gold. Hey, we'll even go and check up on them. Has the Revenant spent on the Teemo, maybe just doing some scouting and still decides to keep the Zyra in the right side, maybe swapping to the left, but his front line's looking super solid. Big fan of the Frozen Heart. Apparently that's all it took. I thought maybe he'd want to sack more items or just, I wasn't sure what a only a Frozen Heart Fiddle could do, but man, it's buying so much time for these backline units. Yeah, I mean, Frozen Heart Fiddle is definitely, like, one of Fiddle's, like, best in slot items. I mean, the Radiant one, at least. Um, yeah. It just, you get the cast instantly, you get to, like, go in and slow everything down. If it's positioned correctly, it just gets to the back line. I mean, and the A-Bomb gets it as well, so you get double value, because the A-Bomb just guns it for the back line as well. I mean, it, it's it's a lot of value out of this out of this Frozen Heart for, for A-Bomb comps, especially. Um, so I can definitely see why... Um, some EU players do rank it in S tier. I'll be on a six streak. And man, this is going to be a tight race for top four because even Shows the Lausch is not Lulu feeling too really good. really good as well. He, that's a really good item for him. Lulu gets um, Lulu gets a lot of casts out of this Shoujin as well. Um, especially with the attack speed from Hellions here. So he's going to be getting a lot of casts for his Zyra and his Teemo. Going to be ulting a lot more. But can he beat the Vayne with the double Trap Claw? So both the Zyra ults. Um, get nullified by the double trap claw vein there. Unless Teemo ults the clump, which then um, maybe the second Zyra ult does get to hit. And Lelouch is going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep on to that fourth place spot against Salvi, who's on a win streak and is getting a ton of eco, getting to go into neutral round with that streak. And Lelouch, last time we had check, which was kind of early mid game, he had had a Deathblade Riven, which I, I think might have been turned into a Deathblade of Filios. I'd have to check his board again, which we don't have the POV for, but. Louch is the one not on fire though, so if I had to put my money somewhere, it'd be on Salvi scooping up fourth. Yeah, good play there. Sacking the um, Galley for another Mystic, not bad. Does help him against the Velkaz matchup, a little bit against the Vayne matchup as well. Um, is facing oh, the Riven Lauch. player that does oh. not have Riven 3 yet, so, but does get the Zephyr on, on the Zyra, but I don't think that is enough. That is a Riven 2. Um, might not be enough here, but that is a Rock on 3. My, yeah, that Zyra hurts. That Zyra does hurt quite a bit, especially when he gets slow. the third, fourth. We even talked about the Teemo slow with his ult too, which is just directly counters the Riven, all melee and all attack speed movement based. So yeah, it just feels bad for Lelouch, who is two away from hitting Riven three. It will have one last life to do so. Holy, that fight got me like on my toes there. I saw the Rakan and I was like, this Rakan is not dying. But then the Zyra like racked up Archangels and just said, good night. Um, you don't get to play the game anymore. Um, 
Yeah, Savi really isn't a comfortable spot here. I would be very comfortable with the Zyra 3 here. He has to lock this and go Gwen 2 as well. Absolutely. That is a huge hit for him. Um, he's very healthy here. I just I just hope he's not on the wrong side of a bell cause. Um, but I mean, at that point, your, your Zyra might just two-shot it. Oh, it's facing the Vayne here. The Vayne does have best in slot. That is best in slot Vayne right now. Um, I mean, you would rather have a Radiant item over the... Oh my god, doesn't get to play the game. This vein does not get to play the game. Absolutely got destroyed there. The Trap Cloud got popped by the Teemo. Zyra killed it. I mean, does have an Akshan though. But I don't think he gets to do anything. Well, Jero actually got the hit level 9 too. One of the few, if not the only player at the lobby that has. And with this... Oh man, the Akshan Assassin, the Giant Slayer is... Great item Wait, to deal with these pesky pause abominations. Chat? We might see a cruel die. proc, and it's a cruel proc for oh, Salvi. No. I knew it. I would hate to be Jera right now. Oh, oh every time. On one HP too. Every time there's a Teemo with a GA, Teemo with a Revenant spat, it is not fun to play against. That thing lives to the very end of the battle, pops the GA, and just scoops you up with cruel. I wonder if Jero was also on a loss streak during the stage, because I remember him being like 20 HP above the rest of the lobby in first place, and as now that lead has been cut down a lot. So I yeah. that early mid game was strong, and then now these other boards are starting to cap out, and I don't know if Jero, Jero can keep up at first. Absolutely, we're facing against Z-Way here with the um, Aphelios too. Doesn't have... Um... Doesn't have the Akshan yet, but honestly, I don't think it's a match for the Zyra. Zyra guns it for the Aphelios. Doesn't drop him though. But honestly, it's it's just another cast away from death and it dies. And the A-bomb comes out. The Sejuani will fall. z Wade's gonna take a swift fifth place here. Ah, uh, bon voyage, my good friend. Nice what are your there. thoughts on uh, Radiant Warmogs? I feel like it's because it, the, the health regen is really nice, and uh, especially a Warmogs is great on Sejuani, but we've seen different power levels of different uh, Radiant tank items. But what do you think about Warmogs? Um, personally, like Warmog for me is rarely a pickup over like the these more support ish items the, like, like Trap ones? Claw and yeah. Shroud. Yeah. So, like, if I am lacking like Frontline, then yeah, I'll pick it up for sure. Um, but usually, like, nine times out of ten, I'm not really picking it up. Uh, I think me and my good friend Alex and recently did a tier list for Radiant Items, and we ranked it, like, B tier. Um, so, you know, there, there are better options than Warmog. Uh, I feel the same way about Bramble. Um, unless it's, like, an extremely AD-heavy lobby or there's a Nocturne 3, then, that's, then I'll instantly take Bramble, um, just to beat the Nocturne player every single time I face him. Um, we see the Resdretto with the Velkaz here getting top four. I'm impressed. I'm happy with this. He's he's doing a great job. Has the Fiddlesticks on the right side, but I don't think it's enough to kill Salvi here. Has a Gwen 2, has a Zyra 3, has an A-bomb with Frozen Heart. I mean, if that Zyra just gets three casts off, it's already one-shotting backlines. Um, and the Velkaz will drop here. It is not enough. Velkaz 2 is not a match for the insane amount of units on Salvi's board. Dude, the Radiant Redemption on the Abomination is something I'm going to have to experiment with because it felt like that Abomination lived for so long. But when you lack the damage and especially how Zyra's damage crosses front lines, I think that's what's scary about her is no backline unit is really safe and it's about positioning against her. But we have our top two locked in, Salvi versus Jero. Absolutely. Lachu copped it first. Last game is now in third. Um, not a bad place for him, actually. It does have... Um... Quite a bit of leeway going into game three. Um, but I would love to see Salvi clutch this game versus Jera because we were at a point in this game where we were donkey rolling for Zyra every single turn, and now we're in top two. Um, that's just that just happened like in the span of like the last two stages. And the fiddlesticks gets an amazing ult into the back line there. I mean I'm convinced that Salvi's been watching Skip play a lot of Fiddlesticks. Because that was a perfect positioning right there. I don't think Jero gets to play the game anymore. Uh, and drops Jero. I think Jero is still happy with this performance. He got fourth place in the first lobby. And this is, at, at the very least, a top two 
So you got to scoop up a lot of points. You're at the top of the leaderboard in terms of the tournament. You're getting closer to that 24 point checkmate that you need to get in order to unlock the chance to go to first as we have maybe a last little roll down, an 11 streak from Salvi. I've never even seen this in stage three. He's fully capped out. Picks up and the team as well. He's like, you know, it's the last fight. I'm gonna pick up this team, get some gold and maybe roll a bit. Maybe get the Volibear in. Um, gets a locket. Makes 10, rolls it down. Will he find the team of two? Does not find the team of two. Sells the Nunu, rebuys the Nunu. remake it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're trying to put more stuff on Fiddle, you're thinking? Or rearrange how this locket is looking and who's holding it? I wonder what he's thinking. Honestly, I have no idea what's going through his brain right now. I'm thinking he just <laughs> wants to play the Volibear. Yep, there we go. The Volibear goes in. Um, I mean, listen, I've learned that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but you know what? He he decides to play the volley over the A-bomb here, which I think is fine. Um, you dropped the abomination, right? Yeah, he did drop A-bomb. Absolutely. Um, that might be his demise. Because the A-bomb did a lot of work. Oh, this actually that might just be his hole. demise, but... I don't think it is. I think Salvi gets a swift win here, a lot closer than the last fight. I don't think he dropped A-bomb there. That was really scary for a second. Um, does win the lobby, gets the first here. Claps all around. From fifth place in lobby one to first place in game two, congratulations to Salvi. And also not bad from, I think Gerald is also having a great tournament. Fourth place, first lobby, and second place uh, in the second game. And the Louch also is kind of up there in the leaderboard when he had first place in game one and third place in game two. So this is going to be a competitive uh, top three. I'm excited to see how the points are tallied up by our admins. We'll show you guys that in a second. But do you have any favorites so far of who you think is really on their A game today? Or do you think there's kind of some unlucky stuff affecting these players? I felt like the early game, this game, was a lot more uh, low roll than the last one. Because, like, the last one, we saw a lot of people, like, for example, like, Salvi had, like, MF2, uh, like, 2-3, and, like, it was just, like, really snowball-y for him. And then he ended up going fifth anyway. Um, but this game, he does clutch it clutch it up and goes first with the Zyra 3. I'm very impressed here. Um, I don't think I would have played Zyra 3 from this angle, but I'm glad he did. Um, definitely he showing... for it, too, yeah, instead of the Heimer did. and everything. Absolutely. Oh. Every single round, he was donkey rolling for it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just shocked by the amount of, like, Aphelios players. I see, like, three yeah. Aphelios players in this lobby, and I'm just like, holy schmoes, everyone's trying to play Aphelios. I was this curious is... about Seek, actually, too, because he, I was wondering if he hit Nocturne 3, and he did, and he still went bottom 4, and I think Assassins are pretty good, but even, okay, he had Assassin spot on Lulu, now that I'm seeing that, did, didn't have room to put the Assassin on Fiddlestick, so, uh, surprised to see Seek not in the top four i think assassins are pretty good absolutely i think um i think nocturne has like fallen out of favor recently and for like more um more like um easier to transition into comps because like sometimes it feels like if you don't like high roll your early game and hit like double nocturne out of creeps it feels like if playing nocturne you just have to open for it get your items and like try and stabilize like in the mid game um we have our scores ready for you to see who is holding on to first place. It's Lalouch with 17 points, yep. up by three, and a tie for second uh, and third. Salvi and Jero, and then fourth is Seek. Absolutely, I'm actually, uh, I'm quite surprised. Actually, um, we've been seeing a lot of like really good plays here. Lalouch with 17 points, Salvi at 14, and Jero at 14, holding the 14-14 here. I mean, Lalouch could go first next game and go first the next game, uh, the game after that, and just, you know, win it all. Lalouch is very consistent in this journey. He's doing really well. Now we are getting closer. Remember, they have to hit 24 points before that winning condition unlocks of the checkmate. For those who have never heard of this format, you have to get a first place once after you reach the 24 points. And, you know, there is a no consistent first happening here, but if I had to put money somewhere, Lelouch has the most consistent and best placings so far with the first and the third place. And seems to be Lelouch has been going, like, uh, we had the 
Riven in this lobby too, and Lelouch played uh, Jax with the QSS Viego as well in the first lobby. So I think he's pretty flexible, but more leaning on the AD side of things. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not quick to dismiss um, like players like Resdretto right now with like nine points. I mean, he could still turn it around, go first first and like um, bring it back. I mean, A-bomb into Heimer is, is very like hit or miss. And if you hit, you hit real hard. Um, so I, I'm, I, I think there's a lot of leeway for players to bring it back here as well. Cool. Well, that will end our first two games. We're going to throw you to a short break to make sure our players are all ready to go and all our scores are tallied up just right. And we'll see you after this.
What's up, everybody? We're back at the uh, Monkey Bubble TFT Banana Split. It's a mouthful, I know. But it's me and Cardax giving you a mouthful for this next lobby. We're in the third one of today. And remember, it's a checkmate style. You gotta get to 24 points. And the closest one there is Lelouch at 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might see him being able to um, copy 24 here, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited to see, because he's been really consistent. And if he cops a 24 here, he might be in the running to win on the next game. Yeah, he'd get, at the very least, a top four. Because all he needs is, what, seven points? I don't know, math. Seven points, and that's within the top four spot. The point split is 10, 8, 7, 6. So he'd need a, a third place or better to get that checkmate spot. But then he has to get a first place after. But, I mean, he's not the only one who's within that 24-point uh, threshold. It's going to be close. And I think Absolutely. anyone can yoink that, but... Absolutely, Jero and Salvi could go first and also get the 24 here, so um, probably, Lelouch is probably only playing for top 3 here, so Salvi and Salvi and Jero might just play for the first. So how much does that change your play style if you want top 3 versus first? I feel like they're comfortable running A-bomb and capping out Heimer and Teemo comps, but does that really change anything for you? Honestly, if I'm if I'm playing for first or eighth in a game, I'm I'm usually like running like Draconics into Heimer because that comp like just caps the hardest. Akshan mm -hmm. can cap really hard as well, but with Akshan it feels like um, you have no other options when you slam like a lot of AD specific items for Akshan, like the Rune Ends and the DB and the BT, and then you're trying to build BIS Akshan and then you never hit the Akshan, then you're stuck at a point where you're like, well, I can't really run a Felios. I don't have a Rage Blade. I don't really have like Last Whisper. So you're just kind of like stuck in that weird spot where there are no other carries to carry your items, at least not as well as Akshan can. And now we're watching Rez, where at nine points is in fifth place in our leaderboard. Started off game one with uh, an eighth place and then a seventh place in game two. So it's uh, maybe a little bit far behind. Yeah, but does have the Lee Sin Vlad opener here. Lee Sin is the highest performing one cost three star, if you didn't know or that. Sixth and fourth. Ah, I mixed up my so, people. Yeah, sixth a very and good place. opener for Resdretto here. Um, oh, double tier? <sighs> kind of hate that, though. <laughs> Let's hit a double Lee Sin pair, though. Double tier, it's okay. I mean, you'll make do. Has Lee Sin pair. I mean, from this angle, I could definitely see him playing something like Hayaso. Has Hodge, has Frozen Heart, Frozen Heart for Diana, Hodge on the Yasuo. Um, you have a Lee Sin pair, so you could definitely go that route. Um, but I would love to see what he ends up doing with this game. Yeah, if, if he were to get a Kennen, would the Skirmisher 3 be better than the, a Nightbringer 2 in this case? I feel like, man, where's that damn Kennen when you need him? But, okay, gets a few drops and gets another Nightbringer. Sejuani and Hecarim and Shop as well. Really good. Um, probably ends up playing Sejuani or Skirm. Oh. I guess Skirm is what he opts for. I mean, Skirm is really good, but when you have an Olaf 1 and an Udyr 1, I don't know how much better that is than Sejuani Hecarim here. I'd probably opt to play Sejuani Hecarim. But, um, what did he do with these tears, man? You're stuck with two tiers and only two components on stage two. It feels real BG. Let's pick yeah. up the Hekka. Okay, that's good. Facing against so do you Wei always here. always pre-level? Because I feel like if you're not slamming an item and you have a bunch of one stars, is this just, are you just trying to save HP by pre-leveling? Because I felt like maybe... Why so spend that gold? Yeah, yeah, when I have a Lee Sin pair, I mean, you never know how, how the dice rolls, right? Like, you pre-level, you hit a Lee Sin, you got a Lee Sin too, it's a wrap. Um, so, leveling is pre-leveling is fine there. Um, and you get odds for, like, if he goes Bell here, he's slamming Redemption, isn't he? Oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh, man. I would love to see the Redemption. He sees the set. I think he's he's wired, hard-wired. To just pick up Draconics. I love that though. <laughs> he sees the set. He's like, mm, that's a Draconic right there. I might want game. that. I might want that's a Draconic. I see a Draconic unit shop. That's a Draconic game. It's a Draconic game. I've got two Lee Sins. Who cares? Draconic is all I know. Um, does slam redemption. That that was the play that I would have done as well. Um he's he's thinking. He's moving his units. Ah, uh, I do this all the time. I hate that. I hate this. This, this is something I tend to do a lot when I'm thinking, is just move my units around and around and around, back and forth. 
I'm like, um, I organize mine on the bench to like the ones I like and don't like, or and I, <laughs> even if I'm not hitting eco, I just sell stuff on my bench I don't like looking at. I don't like noise on my bench or just useless things. Um, Absolutely. But these players want, like, they're literally trying to hit any pair they can. So if you're not hitting eco, having a full bench like this is pretty fine. Yeah, it does opt to play the Hecarim and Sejuani this turn around, which I think is the correct play. Should have done it the first time around. It's a lot stronger having Cavs in. You have Nightbringer and you have a Redemption now, which keeps your units alive. Does end up beating Skip as Sunfire Slam, which is really close here and Ooh. does end up beating Skip Sunfire Slam. Does make 10 as well. Really good round for Resdretto here. Very, very good round for him. And good loss um, for Skip, too, because he's on now a two loss streak and only losing by one unit is, you know, a sneeze on your HP. So Skip's going for a loss streak. Rez absolutely. on our screen is going for a win streak. And even Jero's trying to figure out his brawler front line. So, oh, yeah. we got Skip running the Draconic early game. I have not seen Skip play Draconic, so this will be a delight as well. I do love seeing people run Draconic. That thing puts a smile on my face every time I see someone run that. Um, does get a two-turner. I mean, as soon as you see a four-turner on someone's bench, you know that person's like just high-rolling, top-fouring instantly. The Sunfire Slam on the Udyr here is really well. The Zyra ends up dropping, doesn't get an ult on the Kalista. The Udyr goes in and probably just dies to this Kalista Spear. Boom. Yep. Does get the pre-level. And goes into Carousel. He's looking for... Uh, he has a sword on the Udyr, so I think he's looking for Shoujin here. Um, what are your thoughts on, on Skip's board right now? Draconic or Brawl? It depends what direction. Is he going in AP routes? Then... You want to think about, yeah, like you said, a Shoujins, but if he's more locked into AD, if you have a sword, I always like to make a Bloodthirster. That's something flexible that almost every AD carry likes, but might be going just for that. You know, I think he went for the cloak, and I think he's slamming Ionic Spark here. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you're going that AD AP route, then for sure. I'd have to see. I mean, he could just slam this BT, but I think now that he has the Zig Zin, has two spell weavers in. He's probably just gonna slam this Ionic and call it a day. Will he slam it though? What is he waiting for? He's scouting the lobby, checking what everyone else is doing. Jero's oh, also Archangel running. From Jero. Oh my god, there's so many sunfires on this lobby. Sheesh. Sheesh. That's a rel already too. Did I see that? Too far. Oh this guy, God. this guy is beefy. Does slam the ionic, puts it on the Udyr. Um, nice, really clean. Love that play. Is gonna play AP from this angle. Um, ends up facing the Sunfire Gragas, but honestly, if this, uh, if this like backline just stays alive a little longer, it might just like yeah, absolutely, just drop. His front line and his Soraka here. Really clean. Not bad. Has really good eggs. Like, he's high rolling every single one of his eggs. Two turn egg, two turn egg, two turn egg. Really healthy spot for him. Has a Jax this early on. Wow. That's Damn. where I thought maybe, you know, if that Bloodthirster Slam would have came in, then that would have just been an easy slot, but... Absolutely. Now I think he's regretting not going BT. Um, because now you got that Jax, getting that BT on Jax later on in the game could be quite nice. Um, you can play Draconic into like almost any synergy, as long as it's like, um, a synergy that can hold its own. Like units like Jax can hold their own, Olaf can hold their own, like Sentinel Skirms, um, Ironclads and Jax. Like you can really play Draconic into anything, um, and, and find a way to stabilize. Um, as long as you're smart about it and you go like really, really good and healthy items. But that is a rel really early on. I don't think it's a match for this Ionic Spark Sunfire Udyr. Might be very close because that redemption is really coming clutch. But Salvi does drop to the Zyra Aureli in the end. Well, Salvi also currently has a Riven with a Hurricane. We did just see that board, but not going full Dawns. I think it was kind of a mix of Legionnaires and stuff like that. Yeah, here's the Cav board here. So no other Dawnbringers. I think at the very least, you need two Dawnbringers once he finds that Nidalee. You have the option of going to four if you find like a Garen. You want to play with the Renewer with Soraka, Rakan, or there's different ways of playing that Dawnbringer four. But 
Only has the one right now, and I feel like that health regen is going to be pretty critical for Riven, so... If you can find another one, that would be good. And uh, Gragas one, yeah, would give you the Brawler too, but he seems to think Legionnaire is good enough a lifesteal for now. Absolutely. I mean, every time I've run Riven and I, without like RFC, a Radiant RFC or a Radiant QSS, I end up regretting playing Riven at all. I just see that <laughs> unit getting knocked up again and again and again. As we saw in game one, just doesn't get to play the game. Um, it's a really sad moment when you hit a Riven 3 and then it just it just gets knocked around. It gets Syndra thrown, it gets Volibear knocked up, <laughs> Daisy so comes in and slams it up. It just doesn't get to play the game. Um, but once you get that uh, Radiant QSS on it, that unit becomes like absolutely obnoxious. Um, ends up like 1v9ing. It's I like that he leaves that here. little slot for Riven to jump into and then the Redemption. Which I love with that dam uh, the damage reduction, I think helps Riven a lot, but Riven 1, uh, she do be kind of weak though. So it looks like he's slowly starting to chunk down this board of Rez who has the redemption on Lee Sin. It's just a walking frozen heart, so Zephyrios could have time to get rid of these calves, but this Lee Sin's not living for very long. Man, Sejuani is one of the most obnoxious early game units. Having the brawler tag now um just makes her absolutely obnoxious early game as well like she just fits into like so many early game boards having having just such wani in with a redemption is like really really strong early game um does end up getting the redeems in here wow and knights and ironclads yeah i'm not really sure it's like because then there's that Soraka, Rakan. I thought he had a Rakan at some point. Must have sold it quickly, but... Yeah, this is the best board you can make. I don't care for a Leona 1, but now that gives you the Redeem trait, yeah. I was just hoping for a Dawnbringer to help out this Riven a little bit more, as it's kind of your main source of damage. But this is a tanky comp, so... If it lives long enough, maybe the Riven can do work. Absolutely. I mean, I've been a fan of Redemption more and more recently, ever since uh, Sunfire got nerfed. Um, I do love me uh, Redemption Slam early. It just keeps everything alive, especially on Cavaliers because they have the um, damage reduction. Um, it, ju you, it just seems like you can never get to kill it early game. It's just so tanky and all the early game units just don't have enough damage to drop that. Um, so here we'll be saying uh, simply try to play for Valkals it looks like. Has redeemed units, has Jewel Gauntlet, has Sword, wants to go Shoujin, probably wants to play Valkals from that angle. Um, and Salvi's just chilling. There's just not a lot of good like AP holders, it feels like, the in the early game. If everyone's fighting for Zyra's and Ziggs and stuff, so he has a Callista with JG. So, what are your thoughts on Callista as an AP item holder? Does that work at all? Do you I think it's Ash, just, even? I think he just, it's just what he settled for. He has a Callista 2, you just play a Callista 2 at that yeah. point. <laughs> like, he's got nothing else. I mean, if he hits the Varus too, you could, you could move AP items to Varus. It's not that bad. It does pretty well because it is a redeemed as well. Synergize is really well. But Zwei here coming in with the true damage on the Yasuo. So he's he's gonna be telling the Cavaliers here that, you know, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't get to kill me. <laughs> but with the the thing with Yasuo is I feel like it's really important to hit that three star. So it's it, this might look good at stage three and stage four, but what's it gonna look like beyond when you have draconic players in here that might be losing a lot of HP before they get their bombs and their AP holders online? But it's what is this Yasuo gonna look like two stages from now? Is my question. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking at him right now, and he's like 58 HP. So I'm a little scared for him. If he's really going for the Yasuo three, I mean, at this point, he he is going for the Yasuo three with the Runans and the um, Archangel Slam. Um, I'm just wondering what Salvi's gonna go here. Probably DB or the Riven pair. Yep, does opt for the Riven pair. Nice. Yeah, getting a Riven two is pretty important power spike and doesn't seem like too many people are contesting Riven right now. I don't th I think he might be the only one. We haven't got to see everybody's boards. Um but hey, if no one is touching Dawnbringers, this can be a very easy nearly 3 Riven 3 and that's an easy top 2 I think after that. So there's a Dax in his shop and I think he's contemplating just playing Jax from this angle. Would you put IE on there, or you're saving that for Last Whisper? No, I'm probably saving it for do? I'm probably saving it for BTQSS or whatever Radiant item I get for Jax. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you don't think 
Last Whisper is. I haven't seen a lot of people build Last Whisper actually in these lobbies, despite uh, the amount. Of yeah, absolutely. Plot. I've been experimenting with Jax a lot recently, actually. Um, recently I had a Jax game where I had like uh, Radiant GA, Hodge, and Last Whisper. Um, or no, it was Radiant Hodge GA Last Whisper, and that thing just never died. Um, nice. So, uh, honestly, I feel like as long as you have, like, a healing item, a defensive item, and then, uh, like, Last Whisper, I feel like is pretty important in some lobbies, especially if you're facing Ironclads, um, then you've got, like, a Jax that is, like, absolutely unkillable and just, like, wrecks havoc on every lobby. I mean, we saw in Game 1 the Jax with the Chosen, or the Radiant um, QSS, um, just absolutely Ooh. stomped every every board. CC lockdown from Jero there. With the Ooh. Zyra and the Ash. Here's our Radiant round. What would you pick here? Uh, I would honestly slash FF at this point. Um, <laughs> really? You hate it? Uh, because if I want to play Jax or Riven here, I'm looking for the chosen, the Radiant RFC or the Radiant QSS. Didn't get either. Uh, so I'm th <laughs> probably thinking of like Giant like Slayer. Like IE? Or, IE is or fine. Zeke's is what I would do. <laughs> Yeah, the BT here, is he gonna go for it? Yeah, he does go for it. He has Shoujin BT. Man, what is he gonna do with Shoujin BT? You're He's gonna go for the Zeke. Aphelios? Like Aphelios Shoujins you said was You can play Aphelios. You can play Aphelios with those items. I'm glad that he went for oh, Zeke here. I think that is absolutely the best pick he could have he could have went here. Does actually end up playing Jax. Now I called it earlier in the game that he could be playing Jax this game. I mean Listen. Hate to break it to you guys, but it looks like he's playing Jax from the Sangle with an Ionic Spark and a Shoujin Slam. Maybe I was right all along. I, I do like the Radiant Zeeks from Salvi, because at least you can go for best in slot on whatever your carry is and have the Zeeks just supplement that. And you're just putting all the eggs in that carry basket. I usually only used to see like Zeeks for like Ranger builds, mm. um, but is moving that item around to get some more Ironclads in. Very interested to see what his level 7 rolldown is going to be like here. Um, he's probably just leveling, rolling next turn, hoping to stabilize. Maybe he gets a Lucky Jax too. Um, he needs some good items here. He He's looking for like BT. He gets a spatula? Alright, I'd be sad. I'd be sad at this point. What are you going to do with that sa spatula, Salvi? If you can get a vest, you can always have a cav spat since you have a rel that's going to be perma in with this I jack. Mean, so there's something to do there. Yeah, I guess it is something. Gets the Riven 2 here, picks it up probably. Oh, what do we sell it for the jacks? He does end up selling it to itemize jacks. Gets the... Man, I'd be so dizzy at this point. I think he oh, is too. man. Cause what's this pike doing in here? Doesn't it's have two, skirmish, doesn't have <laughs> sentinel in a, doesn't have skirmishers, doesn't have sentinels in, one away from both. Puts the sp assassin That's spatula. It. He is looking to play Nocturne from this angle? There's no way, right? He is! At stage four? I love this. I, I am relishing in this right now. Are I you? love this angle. I love this angle. Uh, yes, I do. I, I'm I'm excited to see him either go like fast first or fast eighth. <laughs> All depends on what is um what's his blessing here. He's the first one to pop the blessing. Gets the chain. Gets the cloak. Gets, it's gonna go cloak here. Um, more than likely. Gets the item remover, which is two nice. reforgers. Okay. Well, uh, would you reforge that assassin and Zeke's? Or I guess he's pr he's no, he's playing committed. Nocturne. He's playing Nocturne. Okay. He's he's down. He wants this. He okay. lives for this. Okay, but you're. I feel like you're a bit out of range for Kha'Zix because you're only at what twenty percent chance for one cost. Ooh. That's needed until you get a Viego. He really slammed that. He really slammed that. Is he gonna slam this? Is he gonna reforge this? Whoa, uh -oh. that is actually decent. That's Diana item instantly. Yeah, that's actually decent. I'll take that. I did not see this transition. Oh, coming. I guess he doesn't need the Kha'Zix for the since he has the assassin. He's assassin Thank spat. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then you maybe lose your assassin six angle if you don't get that Kha'Zix though. But then you're also trying to get a Viego. But see how this works. <laughs> I mean, there's also the fact that you have to get a three star uh, <laughs> in Nocturne. Even though he just gets a... blown up by simply here, not even close. The th Radiant Thief's gloves on a fiddle. I Ooh. love Radiant Thief gloves fiddle. That item on fiddle, 
I think is one of the best items you can throw on fiddlesticks. It is so nice just getting that fiddle in there with that item. And sometimes you, you can like get the item on a bomb if you're playing a bomb as well. It's really nice. He's going to be rolling here to stabilize. But honestly, <sighs> this doesn't have enough Nocturne items. Takes that Nautilus. This is just like, you know, when, when you're like, when you're like down bad and you're just like, man, what am I doing <laughs> He's here? He's just down bad. <laughs> He's just down bad. Yeah. Damn. He's like, I don't want to be here right now. I wish I wasn't here. Let's see. Uh, he's on a five loss streak too, going up against Rez's board, who has an Aphelios two with a Radiant Rage Blade gets instantly popped by the assassin. So it should be a dub for Salvi. I mean, against backline heavy comps, this is fine. You're fine right now for stage four. But I mean, like, I mean that Lee Sin, that Sejuani might. Nope. Nocturne says not today. Spins around, heals to full health. That is a Nocturne buff diff. And Rez ended up with the Radiant Rage Blade on the Aphelios Does he go for the fiddle? Too. He's gonna go for the fiddle. There's no way he goes for the fiddle. There's no way he goes for the fiddle. He's People gonna have to go. Did anyone make... Oh, I know there was somebody with a spat. Oh yeah, I made the assassin He's thing. He's so dizzy. He goes, he goes DB. I, I think he was contemplating taking the fiddle sticks there. Like, oh, fiddle pair, spatula. Maybe another, maybe another assassin spot. I can fit six sins really early without Viego. Um, he was like going through the motions there, right then and there, um, of what he could do with that fiddle. Decided not to go against his instinct and take a sword for the Nocturne item because he's on 23 HP. If he was healthier, he probably would have taken the fiddle, rolled down, hit a fiddle too, um, and waited for Assassin Spat or a Fawn on chickens. But he needs upgrades right now and power spikes right now. So he Ooh. has to go DB, gets a DB on the Nocturne. Very good for him. Um, he's okay. And he has Diana, Diana too. too. Yep, has mm -hmm. Diana too. He's pretty stable, I think, um, in terms of um, most of the matchups. I'm just really scared for him. Yeah, that looks scary. You have like five Nocturnes away from three, though, so it's looking not so hot on hitting a Nocturne three at 23 <laughs> HP, too. Oh, You're going to have Z-Weight, who has a Yasuo with the Radiant Hodge. That Diana, though, that Diana's in a good spot. The Nocturne goes in. I mean, this Nocturne's about to clean house. Nice. Very good spot for Salva here, unless this Yasuo says not today. Unless this Nocturne doesn't heal enough! Does not heal oh. enough! The Nocturne does not get to play the game. That Yasuo is insane. Radiant Hodge is absolutely broken. Love that item. S tier it is item. so good. It's, it's so flexible too because it's AD and AP. And it's lifesteal, so if you don't get a chance to make a BT, then your last chance is that. Uh, it's also Z-Way and Seek who are fighting over Yasuo's. Of course, you can both hit those three stars, but maybe gonna cost you a little bit more gold to hit that at least. Okay, now three Nocturnes away. Press the from... Ivern. Does he sell uh, the Kha'Zix? He does. I, I would have just given up on the Pike 3 there, but I guess he wants the Pike 3 as well. Gives up on all his backline units except for the Ivern now. So his only, his only like grounded unit is Ivern. Everything else jumps up in the air. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's in a. That's Resdretto. No, that's Skippy. No, so Resdretto and Skippy both took um, BT off the Radiant Shop. Salvi might just get dropped here. Whoa. That we wow. cannot play. Salvi's out. R.I.P. Rough That'll run for Sally there. That transition place. into Nocturne was not was not good. Um, ended up not hitting the Fiddle 2. No Nocturne 3. Doesn't have items. Had the Blessing. Um, was two Reforgers. I mean, he was, he was just going through the motions there. From first place in lobby two to eighth place in lobby three what a flip around for salvi there <laughs> unfortunate but we get to go check in with rez who has a radiant rage blade which i've always seen on tier list be pretty low as in pretty d tier oh. but uh, some fantastic items for aphelios i think it fits yeah. well i think when you're playing aphelios specifically like you need rage blade um i've 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 seen that unit go like either first or eighth depending if it has a rage blade or not um, with the combination of items that he has here, it's actually it's actually quite good into the lobby. Um, late game, he might face the problem of where he like lacks damage with no DB, 
Um, because that Nunu is looking real scary. Jiro with the Nunu 3, but has no items. Only a chosen, only a Radiant Warmog here. Um, man, my heart is racing. Oh yeah. my god. Seems to be a decent amount of ironclad too, so this last whisper seems to be pretty important. I like the Hodge on Aphelios especially because he has that mix of like AD and AP, so his ult is going to benefit from that. He's going up against Jero, who has the Zyra full of AP items and the that, A bomb there to That peel. Nunu doesn't care. Ooh. Ate the Lee Sin, but will he drop the Nunu? He does drop the Nunu. Aphelios says not today. A bomb comes in. Can Aphelios clean house here? Man, I would love to see this Aphelios clean house. Can he clutch oh. it though? Oh. Can he clutch it though? <laughs> yeah, I think he can. That Rage Blade is building attack speed. Holy smokes. Not today. Not today, Jero. You get put down by the Radiant Rage Blade. Man. Man, and to have a three-star Nunu for Jero and the Radiant Warmog, you know, you said it wasn't your favorite, you prefer more utility, and now you kind of wish you had that utility, because I feel like a three-star Nunu has already all that HP. Obviously, Absolutely. probably picked the Radiant item before he hit that three-star Nunu, but the extra utility from the, just even towards the Abomination, a lot of people prefer the Sunfire, Frozen Heart, uh, Ionic Spark, anything that provides utility, so the A-Bomb can deliver that, but just a, a chunky Abomination is, I'm not sure how much that's going to be worth for Jero, but let's We've see who's Rez is facing. One away from Lee Sin 3 as well. Assassin Lee Sin, the Diana in a prime spot to grab that Aphelios. Uh, man. Holy smokes. Can this Double Aphelios clutch it out? Double ult from the Diana. This Aphelios drops the Lee Sin ult. Yasuo in the back with Rageblade RFC, Radiant RFC. Uh, Seek says not today. Wow, that Aphelios is going fast, but the Jax is going a little faster and drops the Louch there. The Louch is right, like we gotta one compare loss apples away to from apples here. Cardax, Z Absolutely. Weight versus Seek, Yasuo, Yasuo, right? But Z Weight has a, uh, a Radiant Hodge and Seek has a Radiant RFC, actually has two RFCs. Which one do you think is going <laughs> to make it further? Honestly, if Seek hits the least in three, as he just oh, did, yeah. as I say it, I think I think he's he's in the he's in the he's in the lead here. That Lee Sin three is gonna hurt. That Lee Sin three is gonna hurt. Um, having Assassin Lee Sin three is like is like one of the most satisfying feelings when you see him like plop onto the grid, just hit the ground and just drop everything within his vicinity. Um, he might be looking for an item for Lee Sin on this carousel as well. So we're gonna see that Lee Sin um, wreck havoc soon. Um, but this Jax man, absolutely. Um, Aphelios gets grabbed by the Thresh here. Jax is in a prime spot to just win this entire matchup. I mean, but you know, maybe, maybe, mm, not what? today. Not even close. <laughs> the power of Jax. <laughs> Jax even it only has two items beast. on it. Can you imagine on the next carousel? But Jero, you know, my, Jero and Lelouch managed to win their game. So they're still holding on to seven and eight plays. Z Weight lost his matchup. So this next round will also determine who's bottoming for. Hmm. I'm looking at that. Oh, both players wanted that. You know, um, Jax, Jax is absolutely like been one of my most favorite units recently. And that's a QSS. Seek takes the QSS though. Um, I wonder who that QSS is going on. Might be Diana on his end, but we'd have to wait and see. Um, I'm actually surprised. Seven, seven, nine, twenty-one. This could be anyone's seventh place. Okay. Oh, gets the blessing. We the know stimmy. it's a double reforger. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, would you? even reforges. I think those are great Lee Sin items, so maybe it's for later carousels if you end up being in first and you get yeah, the worst item on the there, Zizirot, you can reforge though. those, but... He's got a oh, Zizirot yeah, on too. the rel. I might reforge that. Um, but I mean, he is lacking, like, frontline, so, like, his frontline is not looking great. Um, decides not to. Is looking for the rel, too, and the Diana, too. Is facing off against the Jax uh -oh. of Zue. That that looks really scary. Remember when I told you that I don't mind slamming DB on Jax? Well, Zue here has come to answer my calls. And uh, this is DB Jax in action. Will we oh, see this, it? Oh, this was Zue too, who had the oh. Yasuo. Not even close. 
who had the Yasuo at the start, so has now since pivoted to Jax and has since uh, taken that L. So Z-Way wow. will be in seventh, and Lauch wins his game, and Jaro, Jaro too, so they're fighting for uh, fifth and sixth place. Man, my heart was racing for Z-Way there. Honestly, imagine being 7 HP with like two others 7 and a guy 8 HP and then you cop the 7th on that round. That feels real bad. That absolutely must feel real bad for him. Um, but, you know, we're sitting healthy here. Resdredo, 31 HP, playing Aphelios. I mean, he doesn't have frontline. Um, he might start falling very soon. I mean, this guy's got a volley. He's got Radiant Trap Claw. He's got a Teemo, a Lulu, an Ivern too. His comp looks scary. Um, and it looks scary to Rez because he might just drop him for 20 here. Um, oof. Uh, oh, I wish, man. I wish Rez uh, experimented a little bit with positioning because I think previous to this fight, he, his Aphelios got hooked by a Thresh, his Aphelios got jumped on. So, and it's been kind of uh, hurting his damage when his Aphelios get CC'd like that. Absolutely. Didn't happen this fight, but. Maybe Rez has to think about positioning as Jero oh. and Skip are facing off, and this Heimer is looking good for Jero too. Wow. I mean, Skip's like going nine. You, like he's got the gold, he's got the momentum, forty nine HP. He's looking to go nine and just play Akshan from this angle. I mean, if he hits like infinite Jax, is my hit a Jax three and play that? But it's probably Akshan from this angle. Akshan two has a Shojin. That could go on Diana, could go on Viego, has a Fiddlesticks. I mean, he's healthy. He's he's hard chilling. Still didn't even get his blessing yet. So Stimmy on the way, double reforger, might reforge that Brawler Yeah, spot. I was going to say reforge that Static yeah. Shiv. <laughs> yeah, and the Static Shiv as well. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's leveling. I would have wow. waited a turn for the level here. I think maybe I'm a little too poor to roll here after leveling. I would have waited one turn, but he... Does go rel two, doesn't want the Jax three angle, decides to settle for the. Oh my god, it was a Jax okay. three angle all along. So yeah, <laughs> I was gonna ask you that of like, how often do you go Jax three? Because man, that's a four cost. I never see three star four cost. Um, if I was in in Skip's position right now, I probably would have. Um, I probably would have thought about it and then saw like Jax and rel shop. Probably just auto picked both of them. Um. But I think he's just looking for upgrades for his front line because Jax 2 can be enough to win a lobby. You don't need Jax 3 to win a lobby. This Lee Sin only has a Shoujin, can't do much. Um, what? The Diana does ult and the Yasuo goes in with a true damage and cleans the entire fight. Holy smoke. That, Seek that volley gets to live another day. From the Heliod portals, just in oh, the yeah. loving arms of the double RFC Yasuo. Get to go check in with another board. Oh, this Lee Sin. Oh, oh we the were getting cruel. Closer to Lee Sin three, but the cruel. Oh, it almost takes out Rez. But Gerald also falls in sixth place. And this was the one who I thought had a pretty good looking board with the Heimer going. Hmm. Uh, Thank you for Jero. Now it's the top so four. Close. Yeah, Holy there's smokes. three people at one life, and then there's skipping simply. So it's gonna be a big round. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's anyone's game. I mean I, I feel Resdredo is just in a really tough spot right now with like limited frontline volley one, a lease in two with items, fiddle six two, and an Ivern one. And he's facing gets a lease in Diana that jumps directly on his Aphelios. Good night, Resdredo. It was nice knowing you. I hope you have a uh, a good night. Good day. Good sleep. Uh, yeah, fifth place probably. <laughs> um, but wait, is this Yasuo not going to clutch it? Holy smokes! Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Okay, is this Yasuo? This Yasuo? Is no! Holy I smokes! What happened? Oh my God! Against Seek all it. odds, Restretto gets his backline jumped, but it's nothing to him. Against all odds. Holy smokes, How? man. How? Like, his Aphelios always gets deleted at the start of the fight, and his tank line is what's carrying this Aphelios. I did not see that coming. Velkos 3, three on Simply Sack! 
This is the oh Thieves Club's my fiddle simply that you were a big fan of. I was a big fan of, and now he's got he's got the Vagos 3. Will Resdreto? There's no way. Like, there's no way Resdreto could ever drop that team. That team's just way too much for him. With the Radiant Trap, with the Aphelios, but his Volibear jumps in with the Morello. And honestly, he does have a ch Radiant Rage Blade. Might heal him enough with the Hodge. Honestly? Oh my oh. god. Gets a fourth place. I'd be happy with a fourth of that game. Absolutely no frontline all game, but does end up clutching it to a top four. Simply does drop with the Velkos 3 as well. Man. What a time to be alive where you hit a three star forecast and then you just you just drop. Dude, like the half the lobby died in one round. <laughs> it felt like so we have our top two lalouch versus skip a quite a difference in hp and of course a big difference in money with how much skip has been able to win and he's now starting to lock down these two star five costs lalouch is on fire though so we'll have to see i mean we just hit some big upgrades here we got the viego two uh i mean once you hit viego two that unit is really scary like if you land that in the right spot, like you just don't get to play the game anymore. Vega 2 doesn't need um, this Zephyr though. I'm excited to see how much the Zephyr matters. Gets it on the Rel. Interesting. Probably would have opted for the Volibear more than the Rel here, but maybe so the Vega going in the back. Like a volley, but ah, that's wow, a big volley ult. Not even close at this point. Man, oh man, this Jax is running it is running it down on the louch the louch does go second place to the jack stew viego too props to skip here playing a great game of jack viego in the end absolutely very proud of this game very very well played this was a big game for skipped skip as well uh third place in game one eighth place in game two to turn it all around started from the bottom quite literally the eighth place bottom to go first in game three to propel him into uh to 18 points Absolutely. which is now fighting for the top three spot but speaking of once we get these points uh all compiled i think lalouch has hit that checkmate mark of 25 points all he needed was a top three right so lalouch will now be fighting for first place to Absolutely. see if he can take the whole tournament in this next round. Yeah, I mean, he's he's in the running to, to just win this whole thing in the next game. I mean, he's been playing really well, very consistently. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he just plays for top four and just gets the 40 points. I mean, playing for first puts you in a position where if you don't go first, then you play for like first or eighth, and then you go eighth, and you just don't have enough points to like um, win it on 40 points. So, I mean, it's always a viable option to go 40 points here, um, just playing consistent top four. Um, but I mean, he's got competition. This lobby is, yeah. is very scary. So, Skip in second place by 18 would need uh, to six points. Oh, there's our point system right there. So yeah, Lelouch has hit that checkmate mark, as we said, and needs a first place to win the tournament or has to grind his way to 40 points to be our top winner in Skip and Jero and Salvi. I think mainly Skip and Jero will be closer to get a checkmate if they can top four in this next lobby, but they also have to prevent Lelouch from getting first place. So is there a way to just, I don't know, sabotage Lelouch? Like if all the <laughs> things that he likes, just like take- Salvi's getting dude. flashbacks right now. Salvi's, Salvi's like, oh no, not this again. Yeah, I mean, you could just grief all his units every game. Just, oh, he's playing Yasuo 3. All right, everyone in the lobby, let's hold Yasuo's all together. Just hold his Yasuo's. But yeah, I mean, anyone here could, like, take this next game. What a crazy game two and three that we had. We had a Skip that went eighth place in game two, went first in game three. Then Salvi went first in game two, went eighth place in game three. So we're starting to see the first or eighth trends that are happening right now. And But I think Lelouch has had has been a consistent performer besides that random eighth place. Uh, the third and the first are looking pretty good. That's why he's in this checkmate position. Do you have any people that are like you're surprised on the results that they've had, either positive or negative? Um, I'm surprised that simply hit like a three star Velkaz and didn't end up going first there. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, we didn't see what really happened on his board, but it was probably just like some mispositioning that happened there or the Velkaz didn't get to go off. I mean, usually Velkaz, Velkaz in my opinion is like one of the best like three star four costs in the game right now, along with like Aphelios, um, because it's like an AOE uh, four cost. 
So, um, yeah, I, I'm very surprised that he didn't end up going first here. There's been a, a lot more Yasuo action, too. We had Z-Way versus Seek, who were at least starting Yasuo. And Z-Way ended up throwing that Radiant Hodge towards the Jax. So what, do you think that was him not wanting to contest the Yasuo 3? Or do you think Jax is just a superior holder of the Radiant Hodge? Or what's going through Z-Way's head? I know we didn't get to see his POV too much, but the seventh place kind of screams that this, this should have looked better. I mean, I mean, he was probably at a point where he was like, he, he knows he's getting contested. And, um, you know, when you have like a Jack Sue just in there in the shop looking at you, you're like, <laughs> you know what? I guess I just play the Jack Sue at this point. Um, that's probably what was going through his head. I mean, it didn't end up working out, but sometimes it does. Sometimes you get the Jacks, you're online, you get a team around it, you get Ironclads in, and you're just like, you're just winning every round back, back and forth. Especially in a lobby that's like heavily AD and you get like three Ironclads in. Um, maybe you get lucky in your blessing, you get a ton of traits, you get four ironclads, and then you just go first. Then there was Salpy who got eighth place in that last lobby. After getting first in game two, it still blows my mind, but it seemed like he had this this ribbon direction when he had put the hurricane on the oh. ribbon. You had the redemption of Sejuani, but then you had the Radiant Zeeks that you had to end up with. It was just an unlucky Radiant round, and that was supposed to help Jax, but... Yeah, awful. I don't know what happened on Salvi's board there. I wish I had the answers. I'm going to have to ask him about it later. I mean, at that point in your mind, you're just like, damn, what am I doing here? You got the spatula. He slammed assassin spat before he had any assassins in. He's like, all right, I guess I'm playing Nocturne from this angle. Tries to pivot into Nocturne. Ends up getting blown out in the next two rounds. I mean, it was just unlock. It's just BG. Go next. Uh, we just see what happens on the next game for Salvi here. Okay, our fourth game is loading right up. Louch on checkmate with 25 points. If he pulls out a first, he'll be winning our tournament and being $500 richer. And that you can see the point system there. While Skip and Jero, I think, realistically have a chance of getting a checkmate as well, getting to that 24 point mark if they can get a top four. And then you have Salvi, Rez, and everyone at the bottom side still fighting their way back up. But. If you could sabotage the louch, you could buy yourself maybe another game, but we'll see what this opening carousel Absolutely. looks like. You know, I would be typing in chat right now, everyone hold the louch's units right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him get any two stars. Just hold all his units. Oh man, we're going to be seeing a, a repeat here, probably. Resretta going for the tier again. Salvi probably want the... He goes for the belt this time. Salvi goes for the safe route, goes for the belt. I love belt openers. Bell opener, Sunfire Slam, Warmog Slam, Redemption Slam. I love all the bell items right now. Very popular. Um, Sunfire early is really dominant. Redemption is really good early. Um, I like the I like the belt pick up here. Yeah, I used to be. I don't know. I watch all these streamers and I'm like, oh, bow star. And I'm trying to micro my way to a bow star. But I've been realizing lately that just going for a tank item first is so flexible and tr just trying to play as flexible, as flexible as you can until radiant round. We're seeing a lot of these players really commit to a certain direction, whether it's an AP slam or even a hurricane slam and a rage blade slam. These, these kind of start to define your route. But a tank item start, I think, is awesome because you could literally play any board because every board requires a a tank item of some sort so this is where the belt and even negatron honestly is my favorite start because a negatron can do tank or something important like a hurricane or bt absolutely um i as salvi was scouting he looked at res Dredo's board and he had a riven and ash drop um which for me would would like make me like scream internally um, getting Riven this early and Ash this early is really scary sometimes. But he does have an Aatrox too, does have Legionnaire in, has a Brandon shop, has Warmog. I mean, might end up slamming Warmog if he doesn't get a chain here. Um, we'll see how it goes. So would you think Warmog would be kind of the weaker tank item if you plan on going like an Abomination route? Because you have two out of the three Abominations, so that's maybe your early game direction. Is Warmog would be, is, do you consider that weaker for Abominations? Um, I personally don't like Warmog that much. I rarely, rarely ever slam it. If I have two belts, I'm thinking about Trap Claw Sunfire. Um, usually, nine times out of ten. Does have Ash Varus here. Um, but yeah, I do Redemption. I do like Redemption on A-Bomb as well. Yes, I think... Three. Yeah, I like Redemption on A-Bomb a, lo a lot. I don't know what he's thinking here. I think he wants to level and play the Leona. He has that to level That makes sense here. to me. Yeah, but he doesn't know what to sell. So he's probably just going to sell the... 
Callisto and Itrox. Wow, sends a brand. Wow. A uh, brand pair sells a brand. Uh I don't know how I feel about that. I would I would hold brand pair. I think brand is one of the best like early game DPS. Does Slam Warlock? Question mark? He's hovering he it. Thinking? He's thinking. Is he just I... gonna do it once he takes damage, so uh is that what he's I doing? mean if Yep, there if he we thinks go. he's gonna die, then okay. Does slam war mug. I mean, if he thinks he can win this with a war mug, I would slam war mug every single time. I just don't know. That nearly doesn't have Dawnbringer, right? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's good to go. No problem. And I think it makes sense to keep that that poppy pair because I think that would have been the other possible sell. But yeah. thinking this knight two is going to be the next unit that you put in, and as you know, even though you have the Callista, it's only Callista 1. I think maybe if you had a Callista 2, maybe he'd be more committed or thinking about keeping the brand pair. But Salvi is now working off a win streak. So is Skip and Rez as well. Those are the three POVs that we have, while as the rest, uh, not so much. Absolutely. Uh, looking at Rez's board here, he already has Draconics in. And, um, you know, he's he's good to go. I mean, he's thinking if he wants to recurve or rod here. I mean, in, in hindsight, like, summoning Warmog is the correct play because you have recurve rod shop. Um, and you don't get the Sunfire, you don't get a Redemption, just uh, get a Nunu. Sheesh! He's he wants a set, buy the set! Oh, I would, I would play Draconic instantly. I see a set in shop, that's a Draconic unit, Draconics go in. Um, that's <laughs> yeah, just me does, though, Yeah. that's just me though, I see Draconic, I play Draconic, I see I do. Um, you have three different things, you have like Redeemed, you have an A-Bomb on your bench, and you have Draconic. So he's trying to figure out which one of those routes make the most sense. Absolutely. I mean, since he already is win streaking, he probably just wants to continue that. I mean, griefing your board for just getting Draconic in is usually not the way to do it. So just continuing your win streak is good. The board ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? That is true. That that, that logic checks out. And especially yeah. when you have a two-star Aatrox, that's kind of your only two star you have entirely. You might as well play your best board, which is always going for the two stars. And you have a decent synergy with Ranger and Redeem. So it's more, do you want to grief your eco? Because if you win, you sell maybe the poppies or you just give up on this draconic if you're not going to play it. I don't know. He's thinking. He's he's thinking, but I think he's 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 good now. He wants to make 10. Oh, he does do it. I. I'm so glad he did it. He goes level 5, puts the poppy in, gets the knights in, plays his strongest board, holds his A-bombs, holds his draconic. He's like, you know what, I'm going to save these for stage 3, or maybe I'm going to just make 10. Um, but I think both both options are fine. He yeah, can make 10 was, if he wins this round. Yeah, your options are knight 2 with the poppy, or if you put the Kalissa in, you could have had legionnaire 2, but thinking the knight is way better early game, even if it's knight 2 as this board from z it's gonna crumble but at least he has the shojin slam so i'm wondering if it's another well he doesn't have any does he make 10 but i wonder some if he makes 10 here angle <laughs> doesn't make 10 holds the units wow i'm surprised i would have probably contemplated making 10 here unless i do want to make the swap into the draconic a-bomb which he might be thinking of um since he has a warm slam it's a great item on nunu um if he hits a nunu pair then the then the transition is obvious um he is last pick on this carousel though he did take a, um, he does have a Warmog slammed already, and he has a Rod, I think, so he might go Tier. Yep, there he is. Does he go Tier? Does he go Tier? Yep. He might slam Archangel. He might want to be playing Heimerding of the scam. Meanwhile, Rez has a couple eggs on his bench, so he's working a Draconic angle, and then we're watching, uh, oh, we get to switch to it. Cool. Cool. Yeah, has a couple eggs. Sunfire Slam. Gonna give that to... Oh. Well, he's just scouting around right now, but... Someone is going Hellion. I wonder how long that's gonna last, but still good in the early game. I haven't seen a lot of... You know, we haven't seen... We were kind of talking before the show of, like, Tristana reroll not being a thing anymore. Hmm. But we only seen really Hellion with the, the Teemo, honestly. Absolutely, yeah. In the late game. Um, I think... Rez Dredo is in a really healthy spot right now. Decides to put the Dawnbringer here over the Callista 2 um, to get more value out of his Sunfire. But honestly, I don't think it even matters when you're facing a Ziggs with Hellions and a Shoujin. You just get dropped. But he does have two two-turn eggs, which I love to see. And a three-turn egg. Absolutely beautiful. Nice. Does put in the Zyre Hero Rash, probably. Um... He has an Ash Pair though, I didn't notice that. 
they might end up keeping the Ash 2 over the Zyra. At least you but have honestly, the Brawler 2 front line, but mm. he is on a 3 loss streak, so it's about, okay, you're going to maintain this for Krug, sure, but when yep. do we let go of Draconic, or how are we going to flavor this? I, I love this play right now. He sold the Ash Pair to continue his loss streak and make 30. That's that's the play that I would have made 100% of the time. Get to play the Zyra. You know, you don't need Ash. Ash 2 is, is meh. Zyra 2 is pretty cool though. Um, but this Ujir is like lawn mowing his entire team right now. That, the and Rune is just going- a Hurricane Slam, yeah. I mean, he did manage to kill one unit. Uh, man. Playing Draconic is, is a coin flip. It is kind of like one of those weaker boards unless, you know, you can get abominations around it or just go towards the Heimer angle, which is he's, kind of the play with Chojins. Yeah, he's regretting not holding that Ash. Seeing the Ash pop out of the egg and not Azira, he could have had Ash 2 here and a Varus in shop. Could have played like Rangers on the level up. I mean, a little bit of regret, but it's okay. He's still be fine. He's going to do a 3-2 roll down probably just to stabilize his board a little bit. So I am, I am quite excited to see how he's going to do that. He only has Kalista, so he does need to hit Brand and Nunu um, to get the A-bombs online. Um, hopefully he gets a nice uh, item here for his, uh, for his, for his Zyra. Doesn't. Gets gold and a Reforger. You know what? Oh, I'm okay with that. Oh, we're sad. But it's, Does it get a Zyra pair? Yeah, it's like, what do you even... Oh, that on. I like that. He leveled for the ribbon, which is Legion of Dawn Ring. Really nice. And then he's going to probably roll next turn. Um, I mean, he's in a spot where he can like, he can actually go first from the spot. Um, He's been high rolling his eggs. His economy is really great. His HP is not that bad. I would be comfortable with over like, if I have anywhere over like 60, 60 HP in this entire stage, I'd be very happy. If I end this stage with like 60, I'm very, very happy. Um, so he has to kill. People playing Draconic too. Skip yeah. And Rez are playing Draconic. Is everyone playing for a first this lobby? What's going on? <laughs> and wasn't yeah, Lalouch has a Hurricane Slam, so he's going like a Jack Skirmisher angle, and that's the person who's going for first. So not having that Draconic start, I wonder how much that's like either gonna hurt or maybe favor Lalouch, where he's not hemorrhaging HP playing Draconics. But hey, there's a win on the board from Rez. So. You know what? I think what's going through these players' minds is like they can't give Lalouch the first. So I think everyone's trying to play for the first, but for the first. But I think Lalouch is just like, you know what? I'm gonna just play my best board and just. You know, whatever I hit, I hit. And if I go first, hell yeah, I go first. And Lelouch is win streaking right now really hard. 94 HP. First on the board. That is a scary place. It's a scary lobby to be in right now. Yeah, Lelouch on a five streak last time we checked in to go into stage three. And we haven't even hit Radiant Round yet. And it feels like everyone has pretty flexible items. You know, your Shojins, your Sunfire. Everyone kind of has like one tank, one damage item at the moment. And oh my god, it's a Draven with IE and Last Whisper. I'm a little worried about this fight, but I think it's fine. I think it does end up killing um, two units here. See, the thing is with the Draconic is like, you want to try your best to kill as many units as possible every round with like the least amount of gold spent. Like get to your eight and roll down for your five costs as soon as possible. Like on the four, on the four five. He does kill like one unit here. No, actually kill two. That's that's okay. I would rather like kill three every every round, but it's fine. He'll be okay. He'll live. He just needs to high roll his eggs here. The more money he can get, the better. Then his roll down is like way better for him. Um, I mean he's he's perfected this comp. Resdredo knows what he's doing. And yeah, we saw Seek who uh, ended up finding a Draven, and I don't think he has much of a forgotten comp around it. Maybe he has Legionnaire too, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's just a better item, better item holder for those AD. And he had two damage items versus only the Shojins that uh, Rez has. So Seek might be able to win a few just based off damage, but yeah. kind of scouting around. Still not I mean looking super strong. We saw Lelouch like win streaking the entirety of stage two almost, and now he's starting to like drop a little bit because his carries Udyr. I think he's looking for a Jax. Um, he's hoping that he could get that lucky Jax in one of these rolls, and then just move Runan's last of spare time, maybe get a nice uh, radiant item for his Jax. Um, but honestly, with the Runan's last of spare, 
I, I don't feel like there's many units that can hold that other than just like Jax, maybe Aphelios, if like you really want to run like an off build Aphelios. Um, Akshan can't really hold Lasso Spirit too well. He already has like built in um, armor shred. So you don't really want to put that on him. So when you have it slammed, you're probably not playing Akshan. What are your thoughts on Simply? Um, he's running a Misfortune right now. He has the Shojin Slam. She's good. I'm just not sure if he's, you know, committed to a Misfortune carry, but she's kind of... I don't know if she's considered good right now. I, I play her sometimes, and I just don't think she outputs, like, consistent damage as much as everyone else. It is a nice AoE, but... What are your thoughts yeah. on MF? I think I think MF like reroll has kind of like completely fallen off the face of the earth right now. I, like the only time I'd ever play MF is like within a Draven comp and just like throw a Shoshin on her and throw like an Archangel on her, call it a day, and oh, just okay. have like yeah, my Draven comp just has a misfortune in it rather than like build around <laughs> misfortune. Um, but that is a Nuna too. Reforge the rod. Okay, he's gonna reforge the rod and place on fire Nunu. There's no way he doesn't do that. Is he gonna reforge it? It's a, do you not not that this rod? round, but probably later, probably later on, because you do want to get the sunfire onto the Nunu. You don't want to get the bomb in, so probably later you just want to get the rod off the Nunu. He does want the rod, but there's no way you're selling Nunu too. Um, nowhere, not anytime soon, at least. Um, so you can always look at for the an point, ionic, yeah. I guess. Yeah, at the point where you get fiddlesticks, you probably just want to drop brawler and play a bomb here and just play sunfire on the a bomb and Nunu. But yeah, I mean, it all depends what his like radiant drop is now. That Velkos does get to cast, unless Sejuani says no. Sejuani did say no. Um, gets a little bit of the cast off, not enough. Four Brawler is, like, obnoxious. I can't stress enough how obnoxious Sejuani is. That's a Sejuani 1, and it just, like, <laughs> altered, like, twice. That That is an obnoxious unit. Also helps having the Zyra support, who's just CCing everyone. But here's our Radiant round. What a lot what of damage, here, one Lemon? tank, one utility. I just don't even know what this route is even going to be and goes for the tank. And I, if he goes Abomination, that's, you know, he'll deliver that and all the damage that comes with it. I think Skip's going for the um, Redemption or the Rascal Glove here. Oh, Salvi goes for the Shoujin. Love that. That's a great item to take. Uh, does end up going Redemption. I love Redemption A-Bomb. I cannot stress enough how much I love uh, Radiant Redemption A-Bomb. That thing does not die. And you get double value out of the Radiant Redemption item, which is amazing. Like, Radiant Redemption on A-Bomb feels like it's, like, S-tier. Um, because you just get two of them. And you just heal the back line, you heal the front line. So you put the brand in the back, you're healing the back line. You're giving them um, damage reduction. Your A-Bomb goes in, heals the front line, gives them damage reduction. And you just, like, have a team that just doesn't die. Um, feels really, really strong to play that item on Abel. But Salvi does have a Shoujin Ash, does not stand a chance. So that's my next question when it comes to these Abomination players. When you go to Radiant Round, are you always looking for an item that's going to go well in the Abomination? Or are you, or does it kind of depend on what AP items you get for like a Heimer Velkaz angle? Absolutely. I mean, if there's a Radiant Archangel, you're auto clicking that every time. That item is like okay. S tier on Heimer. Um, that, that, the A-bomb though, however, like allows you to utilize like two radiant items because like you get one in your unit, one in your A-bomb. Oh, yeah. So it feels really nice to just get the value like twice, twice over. Um, so yeah, it just depends like where you are right now in the game. If you already have Heimer items and you need like frontline, you need tank, you're probably going for the abomination item. But if there's an archangel in that shop, you're almost always clicking that. Because that item is absolutely busted. Um, Heimer, Heimer 1 with that item is enough to carry a game to a first. Now I wonder what what is going to be your source of damage here. Because you have a Rage Blade and that's going to go good on a Heimer. But you're at level 7 right now and your Velkaz doesn't have any items. So it's still somehow winning fights. But I'm just trying to find where the damage is coming from, you know? I mean, at this point, like, he's just looking for pairs. He's just looking to get his upgrades and his two stars. He's looking for that Nuna 2, can't hit it. He has a pair of Galio, has a pair of Ivern. I mean, he's rolling to try and hit whatever. He has a pair of Valkaz as well. Ooh, this guy's fiddle. a pair gamer. That guy's got a Fiddle 2? Am I seeing this correctly? With a Radiant Frozen Heart, one of your favorite items on Fiddle. Yeah, oh, you know what's happening? Side, you know what's happening but... here? Skip is the is the is the is the frozen heart radiant fiddle player and simply is playing his own tech against him. 
You know, he's 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 given a nod. He's given a nod to Skip here. You know, he's like, I'm gonna kill you with your own unit, with your own comp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Shop. Oh, he's looking oh, for me. Oh, what wow. Is Four items reforger. Really nice. That would be great for Skip, especially with these items that he has right now. Kind of a BG. Are you making a JG with that rod and glove? Or are you holding out for a tier? Or like, what I'm do you do? probably always holding out for a tier, but I think when you have a Velkaz, it's never bad to slam Joel Gauntlet. It's never bad. You get so much value out of that item. Um, I would probably hold, but if you're 59 HP, yeah, slamming it is absolutely fine. Um, uh, really, really good position for most of these players. Um, I'm just a little worried about our boy Louch at the top there. Really scaring me. Um, sitting at first place still. Um, during stage 2 was first. During stage 3 was first. Except for one time he dropped, but now he's back up there in stage 4. Which, which is telling us his board is really healthy to, and, and is dealing with a lot of these A-bomb boards. But you do know A-bomb boards don't cap out until 4-5, so we'll see how these boards look for Lelouch later uh, with the Runans and Last Whisper slammed. Yeah, what's your thoughts on the Thieves Glove slam on the brand for J uh, uh, Jero? Because how, how does that like deliver on the Abomination? Is that the right call? I mean, when you have extra gloves, you always make a Thieves Glove. So it's, I guess, maybe more the target that I'm curious what you think about. Absolutely. I mean, uh, anytime you can get like double value on your item, you just slam it on. Like, you just slam items on A-Bomb. It's, it's, it's really good to just get the raw value of more items. Uh, that's why like when you get a when you get like um a tg cash out out of the draconic um golden egg it's usually like really good because just getting raw value out of tgs is really good yesterday i had a game where i had seven tgs in my team oh my god yeah i had seven tgs because i was running draconic i had seven tgs i took a radiant tg and i just like had infinite tgs and i just won by like pure like just item item diff oh, item I, yeah the checks that item on Jax is actually insane. Getting the Radiant BT in your shop while you're already trying to play Jax, this guy might just go first here. He might just end up going first this game. Yeah. The fact that you're just really dominating for the rest that of the hard people. with just the one Jax. Absolutely. Ooh. He rolled it down too. Like he's on 10 gold right now. This guy is coasting with his Jax right now. It's going to be a little scary in the late game if someone gets like Heimer 2 online, Teemo 2 online, the Fiddlesticks with the with Frozen the Heart is scary. Heimer with the bow, I mean, bow. he's about to hit his that. Stimmy with the Reforger. Yeah, so definitely he knows that there's a Reforger and that he scouted it. So now do you take off this GG, put it on Heimer? Do you, how do you move this Rage Blade? Do you want to move this Rage Blade, but probably until you hit Fiddle, then you move it? Or how, how does this item movement work? So he's probably gonna go eight and roll here, but honestly, he doesn't have enough gold. Yep, he's going eight and rolling. He's going to try his best to figure out what to do with this Rage Blade. I mean, he probably just sells the um, the Callista for the Fettle Six if he hits one, and if he doesn't, he probably just doesn't sell it. Uh, yep, does get the Sunfire and the Nunu. He's rolling, looking for um, his Fiddle. He does have the Fiddle, Velkos so he does sell the Callista too. here. You don't take Valkaz there. There's no way. Yep, yeah. doesn't take it, goes for the fiddle, sells the Callista. He's getting dizzy. Does move to the right side. Nice. So I love many that. On his... Oh okay, my god, he's dizzy. He's on. dizzy. He's he's dizzy. He's dizzy. It's okay. It... It's okay. Does to he be not want to do the JG anymore? No, he wants he... to reforge those two items. He wants to reforge Rage Blade and RFC, I think. Oh. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought Rage Blade would be good on Heimer. Like, Rage Blade's just... fine, but when you have two recurves, you want to reforge the recurves. Mm -hmm. So he's he's he can't slam the Jewel Gauntlet because he wants that item on Heimer. He probably wants to just reforge the um, the items that he has right now because they're they're a little scuffed. And then he wants to figure out what to do. It's probably like a Bramble slam on A bomb or something. You just got to stabilize at this point in the game. Duh. He's looking for the fiddle too. He's looking for the Nunu too. He's looking for like some front line. He's looking for like a lucky Vola Bear, lucky Lulu, Timo. He has a Zyra in there that's random. Does hit the Lulu. Um, doesn't end up reforging or doing anything with his items. I think he's thinking too much about the roll down. This Let's is looking seek. real rough. Does go to a Gauntlet Gwen. I like that. 
This was Seek, who started with Draven, i.e. Last Whisper, and has since pivoted to Nocturne. So that's an interesting look from Seek, but and ends up winning for it. So I guess I won't criticize much with the Radiant Hurricane, too. Man, Skip is not having a good game here. He's he's not, especially seeing that Heimer. He's scouting it right now. He's like, that guy, he hit Heimer and I didn't. What is this player diff? God, Player man. diff. He's got Heimer BIS, and I'm out here with this RFC Rageblade Heimer. What is this, like Yasuo cosplay? What am I doing here? Oh, man. Waiting for that Reforge. We'll, we'll check in in a second. You can go see what Salvi is up He's to. He's scouting him. Oh, man. Everyone's holding Heimers. Holy smokes. Well, Louch is coasting it at the top with his Declaw Lee Sin, Runan's Radiant BT, Last Whisper Jax. He's hard chilling. That seems like the Exodia comp, what Lelouch is running with the Radiant BT. A lot of oh. people pivoting to Jax. Oh, oh, spat. Doesn't do anything for him, but he might reforge. Yeah, he might reforge it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, has a Shoujin now and a um, TG. I love TG here. This is very good for him. TG so is are great. you Shoujin's the Gwen or the Lulu? Oh, it's and... yeah, it's definitely Lulu for sure. You get a lot out of that Lulu. But if it's a Lulu one, I don't know how much you're getting out of it, though. I mean, looking for that Lulu two, not hitting quite yet. Is... Maybe deciding if he accidentally hit the Gwen two, but oh, so close to the Heimer two. Doesn't hit it yet, but TG's the Bully Bear makes a lot of sense and Shoujin's the Lulu. Absolutely. Um. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of random rel twos today. This is like the second time we see like a rel two just being thrown in there, um, without any synergy or whatever, just just in there as frontline. Um, does it get the cast off this time? Is on the wrong side for the Velkaz. I mean, if he was on the right side for the Velkaz here, he might have had a chance, given that he had um, two Archangels. Um, stacking up that Archangel really does like burn down teams really fast. Um, which is why Archangel is like an amazing item on Heimer. Just having an insane mana pool and like ulting twice usually like gets rid of most things. Hits the fiddle, gets the Ionic Spark fiddle here, gets three Mystics. Still looking for that Heimer and Volley too. Has a Heimer pair, Gwent pair, Volley pair. This guy's a pair gamer. Might open a fruit store soon. <laughs> now just positioning over to the right side, making sure to keep that turret protected and Everyone's positioned on the right. Okay, maybe that Zyra, is that a Zyra 3? I don't know if I saw yellow there, but there's a Zyra player still here, but Salvi on four HP. See if he's going eighth or if he's surviving, because he has to win a little bit more. The Rel did cast. I'm very happy about that. His Heimer casted once. Now look how much damage this Heimer is going to do on the second cast here. Does it get a second cast? Yes, it does. But it almost, oh. you know, it almost whiffs like half the board. Gets a third cast, but I don't think it matters because it died. So oh, unfortunately, when Heimer eight. dies mid cast, the Archangel doesn't doesn't go doesn't proc. Dude, the Salvi get got the eighth damage. after yep. he was fourth place in the leaderboards. I mean, he was at 15 points. I think he really needed to hit a top four to just even be close to checkmate. Now he's really out of the running uh, just with how far ahead everyone else is. But next on that hit list is Rez and simply her on last life. Very unfortunate for Salvi here. I mean, last game was a little dizzy. This game is just a little unlucky. Um, definitely feel for him here. Um, Lelouch, though, might just end up, like, taking it home if he gets this first. Honestly, like, I'm sure this lobby's sweating bullets. His board looks real healthy. Maybe you're just yoinking all the rels so Lelouch doesn't get them because he only has a rel one. He's probably been rolling so much because he wins so yoink much. Yoink the rels! Yoink that. the rels! <laughs> oh, wait. This Abomination is frontlining pretty well, and this Teemo is still alive. You just have to deal with the jacks, but oh, man, he's ramped up. He's ready to go. Not today. Not today. That... That item is illegal. Like, Radiant BT Jax should just straight up be illegal. Like, you just get so much out of it. Absolutely atrocious. Um, and he has Hurricane too, so it's like you're having multi-target damage for Lelouch and Jax, so it's just... Wow. Now we get to see how the 7th and 6th place is shaping out with Rez and Simply. We're barely still alive and picking up the static shiv there for Skip. 
I mean, the thing with Jax is that he's he's such a like flexible unit in terms of items that a lot of different combinations of items can go really, really well on him. Like I was playing a Jax with like blue buff, D-Claw, BT. What? Yes, blue buff, D-Claw, BT ended up going first with that Jax. Um, yeah, it's just that blue buff though. I didn't know absolutely, that was a thing. absolutely what? gets a cast off every auto. Just just wax things down. Oh, I, I mean, J okay. Jax is just so like You're it, it is absolutely. <laughs> uh, Jax is just a beautiful unit. I love that unit so much. So flexible. Can play a lot of different combination of items on him. Um, it just depends on the lobby. What item like you really want on him? Is the lobby like really CC heavy? Is the lobby like uh, is there like two assassin players? Is there like infinite like Heimers? Just depends like what you really want on him. Um, yeah, Jax kind of comes off as like a Kale to me, where if you leave them living long enough, they can like 1v6 the board. And meanwhile, Kale, who is an actual five cost, yeah, I know she still exists in this set. Um, it's not doing what I think Jax should be able to do, but this board just got annihilated. Skip out in seventh, but Rez lost two, and through the tiebreaker, Rez is what's getting oh. a seventh. We're looking at the Jax right now, bringing in the dream, and might just drop simply here. Not quite one HP. Sylvie's holding on. Simply is holding on to to his dream. Man, this oh man, the loud. with the radiant frozen heart. I gotta try that more now. Yeah, I, I I definitely suggest you try that item a lot more. How many times have you picked up radiant frozen heart? I'm willing to bet zero. Zero. Yeah. I've always been told like even radiant sunfire, just radiant anything else is better than frozen heart. Listen, uh, that's because you're listening to the around. NA tier lists. Listen, I know. NA tier lists are bait. Don't listen to those. <laughs> Man, I got to go watch EMEA Latin America. You guys are just <laughs> innovating over here with your blue buff jacks and your radiant frozen heart. What's going on here? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the bully man. smashed up the jacks. That's Ira, though. I'd be scared of that Ira. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an Archangel, so it doesn't dish as much. That Jax is not dying. That Jax is not having it. That Jax is not having it. Man, the Lash look like... He really looks like he's about to win this lobby. Man, oh man, what a time to be alive. Holy. And the thing is, right, is like, the other player is a Nocturne player. So as long as the Lash just has Ironclads in, it's a real tough time for, for Seek to kill the Lash here. Okay, realistically, what can beat... A Jax right now. What is better than this composition? Is there even? There's even an assassin player in here. I'd like you throw a Viego on him. I don't even know how could you possibly cancel a Jax. Uh, just a chain chalice. CC. Oh you just gotta get chain CC on him. Like volley slam into Ivan Daisy, Lulu Polymorph, <laughs> Timo Shrooms. Just Viego burst it down. Just Absolutely. <laughs> you just you just gotta like slam CC it and hope to God it doesn't get to move. Um. But you know, Lalach is coasting, he's like full gold, and he's just hard chilling. Salvi, thank God bless Salvi being our spectator right now. He's just thank you, Salvi. looking at this first place of Lalach, who's on fire with 65 HP, 10 over second place of Seek. And Seek was the one who had the Draven and went over to Nocturne with the uh, Radiant Hurricane. And I wonder, I don't. Yeah, he did hit the Nocturne 3. I see his golden plate shining. So it's about organizing these assassins because I think it's up to this Viego to Jeremy go after. drop here. This Zyra is not looking good into this matchup. He might just drop. The Nocturne does get hit. Will it get hit again? Before he gets the auto, does get hit again. Might just drop. Yes, it does. Doesn't get to play the game. Oh, man. That Jax is really... Getting CC'd, yes! Ooh. Absolutely drops to the infinite CC, to the Heimerdinger, to the Teemo Slows. That's how you drop a Jax. And that's breaking the win streak that Lelouch was on. Maybe getting closer to denying Lelouch the win in this tournament. 500 bucks richer. And we were asking, what is the counter to Jax? Well, why not a Teemo, uh, Teemo Shrooms all over him? Because it reduces the the speed of Jax and how he ramps up. Oh, so maybe wow. that's all it's going to take. But there's two Teemos. Okay, there's two Teemo players. And you know, Lelouch is holding a Jax Runes on his bench and another Jax. He's going for Jax 3 here. I am actually scared. <laughs> if he hits Jax 3, I think it's just over for the lobby. Um, 
He's healthy enough to do it too. That's the scary part. Like you're at a point where you're level eight, you're 40 gold, you're five jaxes in, you're in a healthy spot to hit that jax three. This is deciding top three potentially, Jero on one life, Z weight, one bad loss away from that two. Lelouch loses Whoa. twice in a row. Lelouch about to pop a stimmy though. True. Oh, well. Zwei drops. Gets his stimmy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, he actually is holding rels. What a madman. But I mean, he already <laughs> has a rel too, so... I'd be holding Jax's at this point. Has a Viego? I would play Viego now. Man, I love Viego. Viego is my favorite unit in the game right now. That unit has served me well so many times. I just slam like TG on him, call it a day, and just play that unit. Love that unit. And Seek is in sixth place in our leaderboard, so not in a checkmate position. If he were to get first, Seek would actually get checkmate at 25, and then he'd have to get another first. Um, yeah. So potential checkmate for Seek as Lelouch has some items he's getting rid of on his bench. Uh... Maybe not looking to win this one. This Jax but. is in a better position this time around. Doesn't get knocked out by the volley, but is getting slowed by the Teemo, but doesn't even matter because Radiant BT is extremely overloaded. Oh man, that thing's HP is not what? going down. It's just not going down. Radiant BT is absolutely atrocious. Jaro gets dropped. Now it's between Seek and Lelouch. As long as you can deny Louch first place, you're giving the whole lobby. I mean, there's a lot of people hitting their checkmate off this game. So I think it's almost a free for all in this next game if Louch gets denied. But Louch still has a chance to turn this L around. It's a Viego too. Uh, I don't know. It's looking real scary for Louch here. I don't think he's going to get the first against this um, Nocturne and Viego, Nocturne 3 and Viego too. But I'm willing to be surprised. I'm 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 down to be surprised by this. Um, and both these guys have a, a last whisper too, so this ironclad is being shredded quite a bit. You got the frozen heart Diana trying to position this on Jax and even this Thresh. I mean, it's on Seek to save this lobby. I mean, it, it, the, the lobby's fate is in his hands right now. Only got the, the volibear slammed. The Diana ulted. Nocturne's in the back. Man, this Jax is getting like three stacks. Volibear? Nope. Oh, this Jax is wrecking. Oh, he does get grabbed by the what? Viego here, but the Viego He's gets his seat somehow. Stop oh, him, wow. Diego, you must. He's locking him down. He did it. Does he get him. The Jax. The weight of the world is on Seek's, sho it's on wow. Seek's shoulders right now. He cannot lose this what to the loud. What did say, man? The counter to Jax. Viego, Timo, and that's been the doom for Lelouch and this Jax. Now, you just Absolutely. have to keep this Jax away from the Viego. As long as that Viego stays alive with that Revenant 5, I don't think that Viego is going anywhere anytime soon. Um, Has a Zephyr and has a Revenant spat. I mean, when you've got double volley, when you've got five Revenants, it's just at this point, your Nocturne's a menace, your Viego's a menace. Like, Lelouch is like two off Jax 3, but I don't know if it's going to happen for him. Maybe if they make it to um, to the next PvE round. That Jax just got knocked up, got hit, got CC'd, is autoing, his autos are going off, he's healing. Can't the Nocturne come back? And he gets grabbed by Viego! Viego grabs the Jax! It's curtains oh for Lelouch! Oh my god! Absolutely curtains. And takes the win. What a well-built composition with best in slot items, the best radiant item you could ever ask for on Jax, or one pesky Viego. That's all it took to break. We're the five revenants, <laughs> that to be call. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. atrocious. <laughs> Viego actual MVP to just constantly CC that Jax to death. It denies Lelouch the tournament victory. And as the points get tallied up, Lelouch is still on checkmate, so all he needs is a first place, but he's also seven points off 40 points, which is the next winning condition. Absolutely. But Seek is on checkmate with 25, and so is Jero with 24, I think.
This could literally be anyone's game at this point. I mean, because if you go first, it, 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 you you win. Like you take you take the place of the person that you know gets forty points. So they really are playing for first place this game. Um, it's it's gonna be really close. I'm gonna I can't wait to see eight people running a bomb draconic this game. Yeah, Jero was the in the last lobby hit the Zyra three and had a Thief's Gloves brand at some point. So Jero with third place there. Then you had Lelouch with second with the, seemed like I thought was the perfect Jax composition with the Radiant BT. But then at the end was Seek and the Nocturne pivot. Cause they remember it was, I don't know if I call it a pivot, but Draven with the IE Last Whisper seemed like a really good direction. Even you're a fan of Draven, but ended up going to Nocturne, hitting Nocturne three and the Radiant Hurricane, which is also a fantastic item on Nocturne. So here's how your scores look. And yeah, so the checkmate of Jero and Seek and Lelouch seven points away from the 40 points. So honestly, seven points away, you have to place top four. Seek just needs a first, Jero needs a first. If yeah. top four yeah. for Lelouch is so doable. Absolutely, yeah, definitely doable, but he needs to be aware of like Seek and Jero going for first place here. Um, I mean, he's gotta play for first. You know, he can't let them go first here or they just take the, they take the dub over him. Um, I, I would be in, in a very scary spot right now, honestly. I would be too, because Lelouch, I'm looking at his game scores. First game, he got a first. The second game, third place. Third game, second place. Fourth game, second place. He has only gotten top fours. Extremely consistent. So, very, very happy with his gameplay today. So in the Seek and Gerald have to get first, or else I'm pretty sure, just based on the results, Lelouch will get another top four and then take the whole tournament. It might Absolutely. just be delayed by one game, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he he's playing for he's playing for the top 4 here, but he's got to be aware that if one of these players goes first, then he does not get to go. He does not get to win the tournament. So, I mean, it's probably in the back of his mind. He's probably thinking about it, but he's probably just playing for a top 4 here. Um playing first or eighth is is probably not the play at this point in the game. You probably just want to secure just making it to the top 4. And then hoping right, well hoping that the other people don't win first. Oh, yeah. You always got to hope your opponents lose all the time. <laughs> we just Amen. saw the PA go and how important that was. But that has been the conclusion of our game four. We're going to throw it to a quick break. And when we get back, I'm sure we're going to be crowning the champion of our banana split. We'll see you after this.
Welcome back, everybody, to the TFT Monkey Bubble Banana Split. I love that name. It makes me hungry. And I'm hungry for some more TFT action as we go into, I think, our final lobby, Cardax. We surely someone who will either get a first or get to that 40 point mark. I'm nervous because honestly, this <laughs> could really be anyone's game. It really can. I mean, Lalauchi gets a top four and um, and he's probably like, in, he's in, you know, he just won. But, you know, if if um, one of the other two competitors get first, then they just win the lobby outright. So, I mean, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky here what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to play the game. Um, what do you think these players are going to do as soon as like they boot up the game here? Uh, well, you were just telling me how you've innovated the draconic scene with and how much that helps you propel your, yourself at the first place with all that extra eco. So, and it seems like there's just a ton of players that are so comfortable with abomination, with draconic, and flavoring around that, and mostly going AP. But Lalouch decided to take his own road. I don't even think he started with. Draconic, he actually got first by just having the Hurricane maybe even Riven at the start or something like that, and then went towards Jax, and Absolutely, it was all yeah. in the cards. Yeah, he was holding Ujir too for quite a while with Runan's Last Whisper, and then when the Radiant Chop came in, you know, oh, he just yeah, found that BT, copped that thing, and he's like, all right, I'm playing Jax, it's time. Um, yeah, it just the game just went perfectly for him. Everything everything just fell into the right place, and then he ended up facing against a 5 Revenant, Nocturne 3, and Viego 2, and it's just like, okay, GG. <laughs> yeah. I don't get to beat that. <laughs> how the first place ended up being Seek with the Nocturne, who started with the Draven AD item holder and moved over to Nocturne, hit the Nocturne 3. And this is maybe only the second time we've ever seen Nocturne, because I think Seek, uh, he seems really comfortable around Nocturne. I think in Lobby 2, he went for Nocturne and got sixth place with it. So kind of a hit or miss, as you like to call it, as we go into our first carousel. Here we go. I'm excited to see what items people are taking here. Resdretto with a tier again. This guy's four for four tier now. Man, every game's tier for Resdretto. Love that. We got a glove on this end. Skip with a glove. All right. This this really can be anyone's game. I'm excited to see how this unfolds. I love glove opener as well. Uh, a good friend of mine, Infernix, uh, with, with two X's, um, slams TG every game. It just goes TG, TG, TG. Really? It just, it just plays TG all the time. I'm like, how do you play TG every game? What, why are you like this? Why are um, you like this? And he just loves TG for some reason. You know, he was having a great time yesterday when I played like eight TGs. It was it was a great time for him. Um, I have to. I guess here... I gotta talk to y'all more because I'm just not a crazy fan of just normal thieves gloves. Just because sometimes you get a component and it's such a feels bad. And when everyone has decked out items and my two components made one component and one item i'm like eh, i wish i could have done something better than that but a radiant thieves gloves i'm a huge fan of i think that's absolutely. the best item in the game wow this opener is absolutely obnoxious you have a clit to a sejuani and a yasso and a, a etrox man oh man this opener is strong skip here is 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 like set for stage two just the yasso is screaming at him maybe wishing you had if there, if a bow drops here, I'm feeling pretty good about that. But now you just have an IE on the bench. Don't think. I mean, it depends if you want to slam this. But now you get a bow, and you're thinking this Yasuo is looking pretty good. Are you man, just? You're oh like, man. man, it's a sleeper till level seven. Can you, can you get? <laughs> can you get any luckier than double Sejuani on two one and a Yasuo? Man, sells the Yasuo. I did not see that coming. Oh wait. Wow. What? what? Just wants to play the Kled. He just wants to play the Kled as AD carry items. That's what he wants to do. Sure. Yep. So are you yeah, he the does. Last whisper or yeah, the he does. Yeah, he does. Or neither. You'd probably oh. make the last whisper first, but I'm I'm excited to see how this goes down for him because I probably would have just played Yasuo um, and held the double sedge, but he does hold the double sedge anyway. As stated before, said it time and time again. Sedge is one of the best units we to even play have a hecarim in the shop you could have had three cab yasuo with yeah, the nightbreaker too yeah he does opt for holding he does opt for the hellion too here with the with the with the poppy which i think is slightly better um because you get the the extra rat coming out of the portal and the extra attack speed on your clip. extra rat it's so funny when people call it the rat comp <laughs> the little rats 
because even it, it like just RAS translates to like FPS terms too. When someone's like corner camping or being a rat, it's like the observers always call it the rat cam. So now the fact that that's transcended FPS and now we have this, but oh, goes for the rage play once he found that rod. I'm excited to see what happens here. I don't think I would have made that same play. Um, probably would have gone for like a BT angle or a rune ends angle, but seeing a rage blade makes me think that he just wants to play Aphelios. Or he just wants to play like something, something safe, something he can get his hands on um, early. Um, rage blade does give you a lot of momentum in the early game though, so is a good sign. We see a Ziggs with a last whisper on, uh, on Seek's board. And then we also see a Riven with a Last Whisper on Z-Weight's board. Lots of Last Whisper fans in this lobby. I guess after that Jax game last game with the Ironclads, they're like, we don't want that happening again. Let's get our Last Whispers in early. So is it safe to say you're not going Jax if you have a Rage Blade? Because Jax kind of has that built-in Rage Blade. I've been hearing like mixed and controversy around if Rage Blade is good on Jax or not. Yeah, I, I never play Jax if I have a Rage Blade on me. Like, um... If I have a Rage Blade on me, it's going on any unit that's not Jax. If I'm if I end up playing Jax, um, I just I just that item slot on Jax is like important for like a, like some kind of like um like defensive item slot rather than like just having a Rage Blade there that almost does nothing. So Brawler two, Knight two are the options. Knight two being better at this stage. Did I see a Draven? Do I have to clean my glasses? I might have, I might have to clean my glasses. I thought I saw a Draven. That would be way too silly to have it at this point. I mean, if someone pre-leveled to five here, I, I, I I've <laughs> seen, I've actually seen someone hit an Aphelios two star on two two. I've seen that happen. Um, we, there's a clip of it. If anyone has that clip, please do share it. He he hit a double Nico opener and then he pre-leveled to five, and then hit an Aphelios and double Nico did. Oh my so god! So it's it's insane. I probably had some bad milk in my cereal then. I might have. The way Kalissa holds her spear, sometimes it do be it do be spinning and looks like Draven, but I don't think I saw Draven. <laughs> it might have been the last whisper. I think maybe I'm seeing the, the last whisper. Ziggs yeah, might yeah, yeah. be yeah. <laughs> predicting what's gonna happen exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, a three win streak for Skip. This is as good as it can get. Now, what are you going off carousel when you have a glove and a sword component and a Honestly, rage slammed? It, he wants DB, but I don't think he gets the sword. Sword's a premium item. Last Whisper is always a good choice. Getting Hodge is fine. DB is really good here. I would go oh, DB. Go if I have Rage Blade, I go Death Blade. Okay. Yeah. He oh, does no. end up going Recurve. But no Recurve. Hodge Shogun? instead. Love the Hodge. Or Hodge? Love the Hodge. Yeah, he definitely wants to play Aphelios. This guy is 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 the Aphelios guy. We found him. We've, we've, found we've him, seen Aphelios. We we've guy. identified the Aphelios guy. This is him. This remember him in high school? This is him now. Um, <laughs> what a glow up. Man. Doesn't want to go 20 gold and decides he wants to continue that win streak. Absolutely. I would take Heka. Yep. Yep. No, I would just play Heka here. Yeah. Just give Kled a little bit more survivability. Uh, absolutely. Get the double forgotten in as well. Very nice. This is the Kled is one of like the sleeper, like OP early game units. You get a Kled too, you build around that, give him items. He's carrying your stage two Damn. and a little bit of stage three as well. Going up against Ajero, who has some skirmishers going on, and only the Archangel slammed, who's really scaring me right now. Really good is... positioning by Jero here as well. The Lee Sin gets a perfect angle to slow everything down, but I don't think he has enough damage to drop this Kled or any other unit for that matter. That Vlad is not doing his due diligence at killing units. Might get Maybe the you can take out this Lee Sin and... Boom. Drops him off his horse. Nope. Does he have enough attack speed? Boom. Yes, he does. <laughs> and oh, I was looking at Sal because he was on a win streak with Draconic, but I've cursed it because now he just took an L. But who is still on a win streak Gets is Skip and Seek. Now, can you make the perfect win streak before Krugs? Because I have the worst luck ever. I always lose my streak before Krugs, no matter what. This exact round, I lose I every single time. I think that's literally everybody. That's everyone's story, honestly. <laughs> I feel like it just happens to me like every single time. You know, there, there was one time I was so frustrated with the fact that I always lose the round right before Krugs that I hard leveled to six. 
to put in another oh unit in God. to just to make sure I don't lose. And I ended up facing the open forder anyway, so it didn't even matter. So I hated myself for doing that. Oh, not the open forder. Ah, oh, happens okay, every time. Cliff's doing work. The Thresh ended up hooking the Ziggs, who's kind of the primary source of damage. Now the Hex harassing the Ziggs. This seems like a win for Skip, and he can maintain that. And But breaks the lead of Seek from this. I have no so idea how that guy was win streaking with, with Last Whisper Ziggs. <laughs> What's going on in this lobby, Wait, guys? Wait, true, actually. What is going on? How did he win the last, like, five rounds with Last Whisper Ziggs? What's going on here? Holy. Gets the... Oh, man. This board is looking real stacked. I'm, I, I'd be very scared of this guy. Yeah, you just have this perfect three-cab opener, too. Maybe we can go check in with Salvi or Rez, because I think Salvi was running Draconic last time I checked, and Rez is on the Snipebringer Renewer shenanigans with a Yasuo, some item slam. So here's Salvi with the Draconic. So he was on a win streak up until, you know, that just happened. So still in a good spot. Oh, wow. Is that a three-turn egg? That is a three-turn egg on his bench. That's really good for him. Might get, might get a nice little upgrade there for him. Has two Yasos. I don't think he's thinking about it. Yeah, it's just on Sedge for now. There you go. There You're you like go. coaching them live through this. Yeah, <laughs> right, do I, this. Okay. Yeah, because no, you know when 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 I see people playing Draconic, it just warms my heart. I love seeing that. Um, I love seeing those little eggs pop up, especially when it's a three turn and a four turn egg. Man, that warms my heart. I love seeing Draconic eggs. Oh, now he's facing Skip. Oh. Man, he's about to take a fat L. Isn't that like twice in a row? Dude, they ended right before Krugs. They faced each other. And now the first round in stage three, they face each other. <laughs> oh, no, I <laughs> think he was like facing the of... um, I think he was facing the last of Spurs Leagues. Was oh. it Salvi? Oh, no, it wasn't Salvi. Yeah, it was I just, else. I just assumed first and second. Now that was Salvi and Skip, but either yeah, way. Yeah, a fat loss here, though. Wow. One, two, three, four. Man, five unit loss. Sheesh. Wow. Skip's still holding on to this win streak. And yeah, he's kind of decided his direction with the Rageblade Hodge. It's not really flexible items. I mean, the Hodge is not so much the Rageblade, Salve's but now we're leveling right to now. six. Yeah, he's feeling good. You know, he, he has those big eggs, 84 HP, level six, 40 gold. Man, this guy's feeling good about himself right now. If I was in this position, I'd probably go first. So let's see if Salvi can live up to my expectations here. And it's just about being a, a beefy comp and just hoping the Sunfire finds as much value as possible. And who would find value against this uh, is against Rez's comp, who has a Nightbringer Renewer with even a Rakan going on. But he's going to be facing Lalouch, who is looking for a top four to win the whole tournament. And yeah, Lalouch doesn't have a lot going on except this Titan's blue buff, uh, Udir. Yeah, what's going through your mind when you see a Titan's blue buff Udyr here? Yeah, are you gonna tell me Jax, which you're, cause I know Titan's good on Jax, and then you're telling me blue buff, y'all be innovating on the other side of the pod. What, what does this tell you? If you say Jax, I... I'm throwing a chair. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't. I really don't know what he's doing with that. It's probably just Wait, like frontline backline <laughs> item, but it's just on Ziggs versus Ziggs, Ziggs wins. Um, it's probably just frontline backline item, I'm assuming. I. Oh my god, Salvi, can you Hyrule any less? It's another three turn egg, so he went from two turn to three turn to two turn to three turn, back to back to back. Um, I think Lelouch uh, might play Jax. <laughs> I'm not, I, he just might play Jax. Um, I'm down to see a blue buff Jax. I saw that yesterday, it won me a lobby, I'm feeling good about it, I want to see it again. So what do you think about slamming blue buff versus maybe holding out on like a Redemption or a Shoujins? Because it seems like AP... AP carries these days prefer Shoujins over blue buff. The only thing, the only time I remember blue buff being best in slot is like on Karma when she used to be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Karma, Karma definitely is, is nowhere to be seen these days, as is Kale. But I've been innovating recently with Kale. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see her today in the tournament. Um, really was hoping that I'd get to see a Kale today. Because yesterday, I, I was like, I was really selling Preaching. it, you know? I was selling the <laughs> Kale. I was hoping that one person, like I have my fingers crossed, one person would run Kale today. Nope. Didn't get it. Now, stage three carousel. Skip has yet to lose in two stages. So I'm uh, very scared for everyone in this lobby. Skip in fourth place. 
a win here. Would, he's not in the checkmate position, though. He's only at 21 points. So a win here yeah. would just get him to checkmate, and then he'd yeah. have to win again. Yeah, but Lelouch, I mean, it, I don't know. Like, Lelouch literally just needs to play for top four, but he's sitting at 68 HP in stage 3-4. I would be scared. I would be scared being Lelouch right now. Um, I don't know what happened on his board. I don't know why he's so low, but the, uh, Salvi hits Desire too. And gets an Archangel. Salvi is in the run for first place at this point of the game. I would be, I would be like coasting, chilling, relaxing, talking to people, maybe making some phone calls while I eat some like Almost chicken nuggets. Seven. <laughs> Man, he's he's very healthy, very rich, very healthy. He has the Zyra too. I mean, he has a Yasuo in there just for the Nightbringer. Like he's 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 just playing whatever. Nightbringer Legionnaire slams the Archangel here. Is good to go. So why level Does here if you're on a three Archangel. streak? Would you not want to maybe lost streak just going into wolves or yeah, I'm, it doesn't slam the archangel. That's I'm cool. surprised that he didn't slam archangel here. I mean, he does want to lose streak, but he just doesn't want to lose as hard. Um, I'm pretty sure he does want to lose streak still. He wants to continue this, but he might. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't slam archangel here, but he's still. Might Callista win. should win this. Callista, oh. yet. One last Zyra cast and he might have won that, I think. Wonderful um, play by Salvi there, not summoning Archangel. Gets a perfect loss. Ooh, yeah, maybe waiting for Radiant, so good. Now it's... Hey, if you would have slammed the Archangel, your choices would have been maybe like a Death Cap, but... Uh, takes the GA. I love that Rez's play. Board. G is great for Yasuo here. Not my favorite Yasuo item, but definitely a, a good Yasuo item. Um, also I'm the one... attack speed, which is, yeah. I think, the best part. Zombie's be still thinking. Wow, ends up taking the decap. Yeah, I think I would have done the same thing. So I that was the only AP sure item minus, minus maybe a chalice. So Yasuo, but... either so Yasuo or Ivan. Ooh, can't make a decision. He might hold both. This Zyra spot is interesting, though. I don't think I've ever put my Zyra here because usually that's where like my A bomb grave is. But he doesn't have A bomb, so it's quite a good spot. So is he trying to hold on to a second Shoujins for, like, if he goes like a Heimer uh, no. Teemo or like? What, I'm not sure. I'm I'm actually not sure. I think I I probably would have always summoned Archangel here because like Archangel is such like a premium yeah. item when you're playing like Hammerdinger. Um, so I'm 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 I, it might just be the fact that he wants to like lose streak and doesn't want to be too strong. Um, so he doesn't send the Archangel in order to lose streak. Um, but he doesn't want to lose too hard at the same time. Um, I don't know, he might just go Shoujin Teemo, Shoujin Heimer, which is also viable, Shoujin Lulu, Shoujin Heimer, which is also viable. Um, you don't necessarily need Archangel when you have a Chosen Decap, though. Chosen Decap does do a lot of work. Yeah. Or Radiant Decap, my bad. And now we have this, we're back on Rez's board where he's waiting for wolves, but I mean, there's a world where Titans make sense on melee carries like this, but you know, anything from a hurricane to an RFC to getting, I guess, no components. <laughs> so now he's got to deal with, does he want to greed to, you know, next couple of component drops or does he want this Titans? He's rolling. Hey, CB, rolling. <laughs> we'll see if he hates this though. Ah, true. Ah. Oh, he there. had a fiddle and a Gwen if you cared about Mystic, but... I think he's just going Yasuo 3. He's committed. Just only holding holding Nightbringers? Yeah. Yeah, he's committed to this Yasuo 3. I wonder, like... The thing is that I've experienced recently with Yasuo 3 is that if I don't have the secondary carry, if I don't have, like, a Diana 2 or a Jax 2 to, like, pick me up when, like, my Yasuo's, like, getting, like, CC locked or, like, not doing as much as you should be, it feels like to some compositions you just, like, falter completely. Like, you need that, like, second source of, like, CC or, like, straight-up damage from a Jax or Diana. <sighs> this fight is not going in Yasuo's favor. But he oh, might just end up clutching it. He... Oh, the CC. Yasuo wins this. He still has Archangel. Oh, oh my he already god, had the he does okay. not win. He did slam Archangel. There we go. About time. He did end up, yeah, he did end up slamming Archangel this stage. I mean, he has, like, Sword, Tear, Rod. Slam Archangel there is fine. Does get a recurve. RFC? It's ours. Uh, it has to be. What but it's is like you doing? have the GA, so it's like you have the extra survivability if you need to get your hands dirty. Go but sword. Go I guess sword. he wants Runans. He wants Runans badly. Another Shoujin? A, a, a Frozen Heart would be really nice. I would it's go like Frozen Heart. It's already kind of a walking Frozen Heart, so it's like... Wait, is he going to double Shoujin? Oh, 
a lot of heals then. Yeah, <laughs> Lee Sin is a walking frozen heart, but when you get Diana, it's backline access frozen heart, oh, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're so right. I would always slam frozen heart here. I don't know about the double Shoujin here. I've not. I don't think that's like it. Like, it doesn't warrant the value out of slamming a sword tier here. When I could like have frozen heart Diana, when I could have like frozen heart Volibear Bear later on in the game. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too happy with it, but we'll see. Maybe this Rakan can clutch it out. I think you can almost frontline the Rakan a little more. I've been taught a lot more about how Rakan gets heals off quicker if he's frontline, and he's he's you know the second two star on this team. Everyone else is kind of one star, and that's where I was thinking. You know, you have Nightbringer four. Do you drop Nightbringer two to just get better units in? Because a Vlad one uh, and a, like a Sedge one could that be replaceable to just something that can provide a frontline? Because it's Really, what the Siaso needs is some help. He's carrying so much. Absolutely. It does hit the Diana, though. Um, I mean, he was playing the Vlad for a Renewer on the Rakan this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, so I think here with the Diana, he does have a little bit more. I would have loved to have Frozen Heart at this point in this point in time. Like, Frozen Heart on this Diana almost guarantees that she gets the cast against um, most teams. But now, it's like you run the risk of not being able to cast every fight. Now we go into the next round of things where Chero Man, is getting skip dangerously on 89 low. HP with that Cloud 2 still. What do you think of that? I can't believe that's still kicking, but hey, I, I never even considered Cloud. I, I've been hearing that even reroll Cloud, you can even have him as a carry if you get him to three star, but I haven't seen that in like any kind of serious tournament play, but seems to be a great item holder for now. He's at half HP, gets tossed up by the Diana though, and this Yasuo is gonna go clean up. I mean, uh, I've said this time and time again, Olaf 2 and Kled 2 are like illegal units. Like if you get those two <laughs> early, like that's just an illegal unit to have if you stack items on it. I'm almost down to like ban Olaf 2 and Kled 2 from every <laughs> single game I play on Rank Ladder. I just want to permaban those units. They're absolutely obnoxious. Yeah, I'm uh, quite an abuser of Olaf too. If you <sighs> just Olaf to anything, any item, tank or damage, he will win streak you in the early game. Speaking of win streak, we get to watch the Skip's POV, who went on a five game win streak, if not longer, uh, at stage two and beyond. So Skip has been kind of in that top four spot for a while. And I am I love what he ended up slamming. We talked about how the, these Kled items could turn into Aphelios and he has that Nightbringer go. stuff going on if he finds it. Oh, oh, there it is. What a shop. Aphelios, Diana, Rel, all in the same role. He knows what he wants to play. We know what he wants to play. It's a Lulu 2, picks it up, gets an Ash, rolls again. Um, but you're looking he... for Aphelios too before you move these items, right? Probably. I I don't know. Oh man, really wanted to see Kale get some action. Does already move it? Yeah, I think that's fine. Absolutely. Two Ranger, two Barla, two Ironclad, two Knight, two Nightbringer, two Cav. Good enough. Gets to position. The... Why is the Lulu in the front there? I guess he just forgot um, to move it. Warmog the Rel here. That's fine. Aphelios gets the pop. Is on the wrong side against the Velkaz, but I don't know if it matters. When you have um when you have a Felios, <laughs> yep, it just pops up. Oh wait, that Cinder Toss kinda hurt. Well, doesn't even matter. Boom. <laughs> simply gets dropped. Well, what's your okay, I know there's a Cardax uh radiant tier list. So what's your what's your rating on Radiant Cloak? Uh Radiant Cloak? Wait, what are we talking about? Or the uh cape. The oh, with, Sunfire with the has. Oh, the that. shroud. Gotcha, gotcha. Shroud, gotcha. damn it. I always call it a cloak. Yeah, <laughs> it, looks like it's a, fine. it looks like a cape or a cloak. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I messed up. <laughs> That's S tier. That, that, in my opinion, is the best item you can take off Radiant Shop. Um, I always insta click that item. Uh, usually, it depends on like what I'm playing. But like that item is like a premium item. Um, I think NA players disagree with me because I, I was talking to. Um, uh, I was talking to Mismatch Socks about it, um, and I don't think I, I think he he thinks that Shroud and Zephyr are not as good as I think they are. Um, I completely disagree. I think Shroud and Zephyr are the top tier items right now, especially if you sweat them and you scout every round. Um, Zephyr and Shroud are the best two Radiant items in the game. Trap Claw is also pretty good. TG is also an honorary mention in S tier. Um, so I definitely disagree with with the with the NAs on this one. 
<laughs> the NAs. Yeah. Well, do you disagree with C going for another Nocturne 3 <laughs> where it has the IE, Giant Slayer, and Last Whisper? So, Giant Slayer always that optional third damage item if you can't build anything better. Gonna be good against uh, people who have a lot of health, which is against abominations, etc., is always a good item. But hey, C's got a pretty good looking comp. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking at that Teemo and it looks real scary. Um, that Teemo is giving me nightmares. I wait. I didn't even notice who had that. Um, gets another kill and chop. This man rolled over two kills. Why can't we just play kill, man? Come on, Skip. I know you want to. I know you want to, man. You got rel. You got a kill. Let's just play kill, my guy. No, no. I guess he said not today. He doesn't have an auction though. And we're watching Skip, who's the only one to qualify for Worlds from EU. And one of the 40 players invited to EU West compete, uh, you know, for, from his ladder play. And got a uh, third place behind Salvi, went to finals to finish second, qualify for Worlds. So this is your Worlds representative there of Skip and doing pretty good so far in second place. Uh, I think we just scouted a Kel player in the sloppy, by the way. I think it's happening. Oh, they heard you. They heard my pleas. Oh my god, that is why you play Radiant Archangel Heimer. That thing is illegal. Oh no. Yeah, you're not killing that. This guy has Trap Claw. He's got Radiant He's got Radiant Archangel, Archangel Jewel Gauntlet. One all from that thing, and you're sent straight to oh, 8th place. Oh, the Nightbringer spat? Nightbringer 6 question mark? I don't know about he's 6. He's looking for... Just missing the Yasuo if he wants to go six, but you don't usually see that too often. Because I feel like you oh. have your core Nightbringers here. The Sesh, mm. Lisa, and Frontline, Diana, Aphelios, so it's like... I wonder if he just wants to play, like, um, Nightbringer... Oh? Wait. Nightbringer no. Teemo? <laughs> Whoa. I don't even know what's going on here. I'm at a loss for words right now. I'm just... Just here to observe watching this, and take Yeah, notes. I'm watching this as it goes down. I'm like, okay. Th this is our world's representative. I gotta I gotta learn a little bit. And he it's does end route. up going on route. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was I was wondering, like, that can't be on Teemo, right? But playing Teemo for the um the CC is nice. Um just having a unit that throws shrooms and CCs like enemy boards is really, really nice. I love Teemo, especially because he has Lulu already. So he gets also the um two Hellions. Um and gets a little rat that pops out of the portal every now and then. <laughs> and Z, we do have the kill, though! Oh we do God. have the kill! I love seeing kill, but I don't think Lilash is gonna top four this game. He just needed a top four. Last life? Oof. Not even close to salvaging a seventh or sixth or just anything from that. Salvi's also on a win streak. Man, Skip is now we gotta roll down. down for Skip. Oh, no. <gasps> I don't you... know. Would you even fit like a like there's a Yasuo there, but then you already spent HP to put this Teemo in, but then you'd get Nightbringer. So it's like Nightbringer six. What would you do? Oh, Red Rez also hit Yasuo three. Honestly, what I would do at this point is just try and top four because he doesn't have he doesn't even have a Felios pair, but that kill, I mean I that kill looks real sus. Um <laughs> that that is a very Titan's sus. Cutest. That is a very sus kill right there. I mean does it even do anything? Does it ascend? It does, does it ascend. ascend? <laughs> get stunned mid-ascension? It, it does ascend. Does it get to play? It does get to play the game, I guess. I mean, I mean, Lelouch needs to play for top four. If this is his way of doing it, I'm all ears. I can't even believe that. Uh, a Titan's Resolve, a QSS, and a BT. What? Just even the choice of items. You seem to be the Kale innovator over here. What are... Is that are those good items? Because the Titans <laughs> doesn't make sense to me. Listen, um, QSS Kale is great. BT Kale is a height. But the the main component that I always stress that you need to play on Kale is the Rage Blade. You need that Rage Blade. Rage Blade healing items. So Rage Blade BT is fine. Rage Blade Hodge is fine. Rage Blade Gun Blade is fine. Um, all of those combinations work. But you need the Rage Blade if you want to play Kale. So even Skip is in a better position to play Kale than that guy. Yeah, and then we get to go check in with Salvi, who is on a five-win streak, has a 
Bully Bear 2, a Teemo 2? Oh my god. Man, I'm scratching my head at this. I don't I don't even know what's going on here. He's nine. He's got a Teemo 2. He's waiting on his Heimer 2. He's he's got this Teemo is scary. I mean that Nocturne is scary though. But I'm pretty sure Teemo like makes quick work of that as long as he's positioned correctly. Um Resdreto here with the Yasuo of three. The Diana is in the right spot, gets the ulti off the team on the Heimerdinger. The Volibear does slam, though. I don't think this Yasuo is going to get to play the game anytime soon if this team keeps oh. casting. Does not even get to play the game. I think Resdreto is going to call it a day here. See you later. Boom. And drops. Damn. That was a Yasuo 3, and you said the counter to that is just the CC lock. CC it. And as yep. soon as the Volley Bear hit down, the Yasuo was put to sleep. And then you had the Teemo Mines and the Heimer turret bursting him, already proccing the uh, the GA that I think he had on him. So that is an 8th place from Simply and a 7th from Rez. Honestly, at this point, this whole lobby is playing for 2nd. Uh, this entire lobby is playing for 2nd place. And like looking at Salvi's board here, I would be like, I, I would be like going to the kitchen and making myself a sandwich at this point. I don't even <laughs> want to reposition. I'm just chilling. I'm um, the only person I might be scared of is like the Nocturne player if he like gets to my to my backline because my teammate doesn't have a GA here either. Um, but honestly, with just good positioning on the volley on the Ivern in the backline, I think you're you're good to go. Yeah, that is still an Aphelios one, one, by the way. Yeah, absolutely atrocious. Like that's not, that's gonna be doing peanuts. The volley oh. that slam the volley in it of itself like slammed that Aphelios down to like no HP. Um the Teemo died though, but the A-bomb is in and the A-bomb does kill the Aphelios, so it's over. Oh the Teemo's right there. I didn't even see him walk up. The Kale There's though. Oh! Can the Kale Kale cannot beat that? That so kill is against so this sad. this volley bear oh. Heimer Teemo oh. setup. No, it's not enough to take out little Louch, but uh, with this Volley Bear Heimer Teemo setup, is there a way you can pull Volley to one side and protect your Aphelios? Because this Volley is going to hit most of the board, but is there a way to just survive this, or is this like the first place comp? Yeah, you're you're surrendering yourself to, to Salvi here. <laughs> so, Salvi's Salvi's just got the Exodia. You know, it's like it's like when you just hit every five cost two star, and you're just you're just chilling. It's just nothing you can do about it, honestly. You just accept your fate every time you face him. You're like, okay, I'm about to get dropped for 20. Um, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like he did kill like quite a bit of units, but not enough. Uh, he's going to hit Heimer 2 here, isn't he? Oh, no. He hit the Gwen 2. He's looking for the Heimer. Has another volley. He's like, all right. Where's my just Heimer holding now? Them. Still has a Lula 1, though. Like, he had Volley 2 and Teemo 2 way before Nunu 2 and Lulu 2. So Are he you? had, like, he had 2 star 5 costs before even the 3 costs. I mean, this guy is, like, hard chilling. Okay, so he does. Uh, my next question was going to be about whether you lock at the back line or the front line. Because the, the front line is kind of dispersed right now. But the sides to put the lock in on the back line for Lulu, extra yeah. support for this Teemo, and yeah. even the Gwen, the little safety <laughs> bubble. Oh. That Heimer is real scary. Like, if that gets another ult off, oh, it doesn't. That ult does not proc the Archangel. If Heimer dies, the Archangel doesn't proc on the ult. Oh, man. Pupination versus Pupination and a Lux in between the pain sandwich, but Jero is wow. still living. And Lelouch is actually out. No top four. But Lash doesn't squinting? get the top oh four in the one game he needs to. The nerves, the pressure was on him. It's like when the pressure is on you, you just, you just like, you know, you become a different player. You start to make He's mistakes. Like, this is the last time I listened to Cardax and his Kale shenanigans. <laughs> the, the Kale I, re I really hope it wasn't me. I really hope it wasn't. <laughs> I listen, I've been a preacher of Kale with with Rage Blade and healing item. I mean, if you play Kale without like your it's like it's like playing like um uh, it feels like you play Akshan. Like you can't really like slam random item Akshan and expect to go first. You just got to get his BIS in. You you got to get the best in slot. You got to get the Rage Blade, the defensive item and the healing item um onto the Kale. Um especially the healing item I feel like is 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 important like I had a Radiant Hodge Kale that did a lot of work without Rage Blade. But here we're facing the Nocturne here, which I was scared about initially, but honestly, 
Maybe not. Maybe the Lulu just polymorphs him. Yep, does get the polymorph. The Heimerdinger turn does get the cast. The Nocturne's in GA, comes out of GA, comes at Teemo, but he does get CC'd again by the A-bomb and the Heimerdinger casts. It's over. Oh Seek man, Seek takes a huge hit from that. And also the fact that his Diana only really affected the Nunu and wasn't able to access that back line. Meanwhile, you have this Nidalee 3 fighting oh. for her life against Holy. a Turret and a Syndra 2. <laughs> oh my god. Man. Oh! Nice! Alright. If Salvi wasn't already winning the lobby, now he is. Zeewee kind of creeping his way up, though, to the top four. I know we don't get to see his board, but I saw on the side that he hit a Riven 3 and a Rakan 3. I mean, you look and at his board. And apparently has Heimer and Syndra going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's all he has. He's literally just got Riven 3 and and, and he's got Riven 3 and Nidalee 3, and the rest of his board just looks like a joke. Um, but the fact that he's able to, like... Oh, there he is. Yeah. I mean, he's got Rakan 3. Is. He's got Rock on 3, but he's got like a Aurelia 2, Fiddle 1, Lulu 1, uh, Sedge 1. Is that a Radiant D-Claw in Italy? Okay. That is a Radiant D-Claw in Italy. We just uh, couldn't do better, unfortunately. <laughs> doesn't get to play the game. Does wow. not get to play the game. Gets dropped. Jaro and Zue getting dropped. Oh my god, Wait, three people two? got dropped. Holy smokes. Seek and Salvi. In the top two. The fourth for Jero, Skip in third place. And this oh. was Skip who had the Rage Blade Hodge. We thought that was the Exodia. He was on a win streak. I'm surprised Skip's not still in it. I mean, I'll still take a third place, but. I mean, when you're facing off against Salvi, who's looking like the real Exodia right now, I mean, it's a little scary for Seek here. But Seek is in the checkmate position. He's at 25 points. If he gets first place, Seek steals the tournament away from everyone. When Absolutely. Seek was middle of the pack and Salvi, I'm looking at his points, he was at 16. So, you know, first or second, sure, he might get a checkmate, but you just got to prevent Seek from getting first. <laughs> That's the goal here. Absolutely love this Volibear Bear positioning right here. Um, the Teemo gets absolutely annihilated by the Diana, gets grabbed in, but I don't think it's enough for the Nocturne to ever win this. It's just way too much CC, but Nocturne is alive. He is alive. He is alive. Let him spin. He is alive. He's spinning. spinning. He's spinning. Can he come through? He does come through. <gasps> 2 HP in a dream. 2 HP. Oh my god, I'm actually shaking. I'm shaking right now. Um. The first time we won was because we dropped the Nocturne, we CC'd him, and then killed him off GA off rip. This time we just couldn't do the same. We got shrouded. Um, we just couldn't do the same thing. Um, I feel like the Volibear positioning there was not as good as the last one. The last one like dropped right into the circle where all his units were. This time it was a little like off to the side, and Diana got an alt off. Oh, wait, what's going on here? Okay, he fakes the move. Doesn't matter. Position's the same exact way. Let's see how it goes. This is the all or nothing round right here for um, for Seek. Can't take the game off this. The Volibear oh. misses, whiffs his all completely. This is really bad. Wait, the Nocturne is getting close to this Heimer, but he's just getting CC chained, but he's still spinning. Heals back up the full. This Heimer is going into Remnant proc, so the Nocturne leaves the situation as the Heimer is brought back. Still kicking, but this Nocturne is swiping left on everyone in this. Will knock Salvi out, and Seek will win this lobby and also the tournament for the Checkmate Monkey Bubble Banana Split. Woo! What a roller coaster of emotions there. I am actually shaking. Sheesh. Seek. Well played, man. <laughs> that Nocturne game, man. Salvi, I think he could have won that. It's just a little bit more positioning, maybe moving to the left side there, dodging the shroud, getting the Volibear to do a better ulti. I don't like the fact that he moved the Volibear way to the back, maybe a little more to the front, like where the circle is. Um, yeah, uh, this really came down to tooth and nail in the end. Crazy how Nocturne just ends up winning the tournament here. Um, thoughts on thoughts on Nocturne? We've seen Nocturne like quite a couple times today. 
Oh, I've been told that I've been told the gospel of Nocturne, but just how difficult it is to execute. It's not even about the reroll, because everyone with a brain cell can know how to press D and just reroll and get Nocturne 3. It's about how you position those assassins, how you enable them with the utility items, whether it's Zeke's or who you make an additional assassin if you get an assassin spat. But Zeke comes out of the woods, was middle of the pack in this whole leaderboard to steal this tournament win away from Lelouch, who I think honestly sabotaged himself listening to you and went for a kick <laughs> I will like, not to casters, man. I will not be don't taking the blame. I will not be taking the blame for Lelouch. Listen, I've been preaching, Kale, but here we go. <laughs> here are the scores up on the screen. Oh, man. Everyone got to walk away with some money, whether for some kind of little burger or quite a juicy burger. 500 bucks for Seek. Absolutely. And you all, you know these players a lot better than I do. When I got to speak to Zeke, you know, been playing Seek. So he's been playing since set one mm -hmm. on the EU NE server, moved to EU West in set three, played in the first Worlds qualifier. It's been challengers, wins, wins a bunch of tournaments, plays whatever is good in the meta. Didn't see him in the recent Worlds qualifier, but he's an upcoming talent. Absolutely. I mean, at this point, uh, Skip is already playing at Worlds. I mean, he can take his 200 bucks buy himself like something nice to snack on <laughs> while he's while he's playing for well, worlds unfortunately worlds. <laughs> unfortunately we're not going to china this year unfortunately we're going to be doing it online but um hopefully it's a nice little it's a nice little um reward for him going into worlds I just love to see more support for EGU in Latin America, and this has been an awesome event put on by Monkey Bubble, and I've been hearing they want to continue to support these players and this um, this scene a lot more. And Absolutely. although you know I had to wake up at 6 a.m. and you're it's middle of the day for you, I had a blast casting with you, and you brought the brains, and I'm just here existing, and so are. <laughs> some of these cops like kale just exists kind of this is what i do i'm the kale of this cast <laughs> uh, <laughs> no definitely not you definitely carried this cast team today i don't know where i'd be without you here today honestly um this was really enjoyable i'm really glad that the eu gets to get a little bit more to showcase their skills amazing players we play very differently than a lot of other regions um and um i'm just excited and hyped that uh, EU gets a little bit of representation here today. And thank you everyone for participating. Everyone did an amazing job today. A lot of great plays. Um, I was, I was, I was learning. I was watching, I was learning, you know. Um, Skip, uh, yeah, unfortunately Skip didn't get to show me his uh, perfect Fiddlesticks global rank one <laughs> positioning. Um, but you know, maybe next time. Well, that's all Monkey Bubble has for you today. But if you enjoyed their content, if you want to go see more TFT tournaments or other tournaments Monkey Bubble is putting on, make sure you follow this channel, follow them on Twitter. And this is Cardax. I'm Lemmy Kiwi. That's all we have for you today. We'll see you next time.